<laughs> Get away from a guap, bitch. <laughs> That's pure gaping. He's a brilliant fella, like, brilliant. and um, he's, he's good at his job, but he's actually just generally a nice fella outside of it. There's no, like, different persona. Uh, and But he'll be like, look, we've only got 60 seconds, so answer the questions with, you know... He well, he, uh, he sets you up with how much time you got, whereas other people will just... Put you in the spot. And well, not even. They'll just stand there with a microphone in front of you, ask you a three-word question, and just sort of... Expect you to do all the work. that I say something that twigs their next question, Fuck. and you kind of get that as well, so you're nearly setting up... What, do you, th- what do you want them to say next? <laughs> of mine, because that's just how it goes, and you know them, so... Yes, that's Very funny. Good. Like, yeah. But I, uh, it's... Uh, a lot of people don't like it. What do you mean the media stuff? I uh, like, really hate it. As in, would would actually actively go and listen to what they said after, and it eat them up or like oh self pressure. I said this. I have to do this now. But Water these kids are athletes. Yeah, he <laughs> couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> You've come to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I don't, and I, and I make no apologies about it. I, I actively avoid it. I. Um, but for one of the, the only one I've actually listened back was because it was sent to me was I done a sixty second thing for the AGA because they just do their own PRO stuff. Mm. It's all about brand. But whatever microphone they had on like their phone or something at the time got muffled, so you couldn't hear anything. I said it was just like a <laughs> so for a better so for a better crack. He didn't post it anywhere, but he took like a Mexican. Voice over like <laughs> Dead and I was like, but he got whatever AI used to do it. It was when I went my mouth that it came out, and I was like, post that. that ah, that's be, so funny. That would be amazing. Why not? A secret weapon from Slack Neil. Oh, he's like, oh, we, we that. That would just hit a different market. It'd be for, so funny. But then you're like, is it professional? Is it not? But nice. it's, it's leak, you could leak it to TikTok and claim it was somebody else. You could. You could. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually Mexican. <laughs> they just subtitle, it's like that. Uh, Hitler video, you just subtitle whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to clip that out and take this own idea. <laughs> any, any technical glitches about language change? All Mexican. Yeah. Oh, I never checked this mic. I, th- I think that's okay here. Tilt it on towards you a wee bit more, or just the actual mic itself, yeah. Who set this one up? Me. Aye. Fuck you. Usual. Usual way to mic. The last podcast we did was with Rosa Tralee. Derry Rosa Tralee was Darcy Taylor. Yeah. And he didn't set my mic up right. So halfway through, like a real emotional part, this fell off in the middle of it. And I was like, I was like, oh, 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 oh. It was you. you, but it was, it was ultimately my fault to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I exactly. Uh, hey, but you noticed it coming down all the time. No, no, it broke in half. It, didn't. it literally came apart. It broke. Remember? I don't remember that it at all. It literally broke. as if you were doing something really. Yeah. Posing like uh, that. It literally broke and just fe- it fell yeah. into my arms oh. like this. It happened with like, uh, arms. Yeah. Arm so you had to hold it like an old like 1980s singer. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so easy. Right. And we're Fuck, back. Been so I had long. to say sorry. I was like, I'm sorry, Darcy. She was in the middle of a story, like, and I don't know. She was crying ever. No, no, she wasn't crying. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm not bad Thank you, John. Oh, nah, okay. Day mid podcast on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a wee go. Well, we can get some more in a wee bit. Um, welcome, Brandon. Thank you. Podcast Hello, Brandon. started in case you hadn't noticed. Um, we water there as well. A uh, few wee bickies as well. For, thank you, Fergal, for bringing them along. You're welcome. It's not what I would choose. What would you choose yourself? Actually, I would choose them. You They're would. great for a cup of tea. Yeah. You would. They're yeah. fantastic with a cup of tea. Uh, I wouldn't pick up. It's like, okay. a, it's like a wee bit of chocolate that gives you the taste, but Aye. you're eating Aye. like a flake meal or something. Aye. I think flake, flake meal. Bickies are underrated for uh, sure. They're tasty. I brought a wee it's b- like a custard cream. Uh, yeah. Like you're eating them, you're happy enough. You're yeah. at your you grammys. probably wouldn't go and pick them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you do you're eat them, you're like, oh, fuck. You're at your grammys. You bad. might as well. They're at the bottom of the tin. Uh, I brought a wee Kit Kat and Blue Ribbon too. That's for um, you, is it? 
That's See, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't th- I wouldn't thank you for Blue Ribbon. No, I, I think they're stinky too, actually, to be fair. I must say to Clint about that. She bought them but for the But they are always bought. They're always there. Uh, they're someone there. buys them. <laughs> they're, there. they're like the bottom of the barrel sort of stuff. I must say to Clint. Not to order them again. Um, welcome, Brandon. Tea drinker, Trey Bay connoisseur, All-Ireland and world champion Irish dancer. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. A very mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how is things with yourself? Great, yeah. Um, it's like everything. My week to weeks, how's the body feeling? Um, yes. How is the body feeling? Great. <laughs> That's actually the best it's been in about a year. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Fantastic. Class. Yeah. It's a hard corner to turn, but yeah, nice change. Oh, should be grand. Um, <laughs> have you ever listened to the podcast before? I have. I listened to Shea Gribbins, um, the one you done with James doc- and Arn. She Doctor. I James and Arn. <laughs> yeah. Did you see? I was in James' primary school class. I used to run about with James. He's just... actually sent a question in for later. He has so. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking good one, too. <laughs> Did you know I, get a, I should share this. And then I thought, no, because somebody's going to bring up something horrible if I share it. <laughs> so I'll share it after it goes out. The James' podcast. No, mine is like a... Oh, yours, yours. I yours. get absolutely runs with hard questions here, and you guys would obviously know this is deep. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just throw it out. You sit and cry in there. No, no, you'll be grand. There's nothing too crazy here. Uh, no, there is, but we'll chat to you about it later. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, do, you, do you listen to many podcasts in general? Would you be a hardcore podcaster? Um, I would, yeah. So probably... Joe Rogan, the big one. Um, Huberman Lab. Very good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you not yeah. find him intense though? Like I can oh, only listen to like... Paper. No. Ah, you definitely do. You do. Do you ever stick him on and like... Ah, I'm not in the mood for this. I do like half an hour stints of his. No, I do. I, no, like I do movie hours sometimes, but there's the odd time of like, oh, I need to stick something on here, you know, and then stick it on and go, fuck, that's a bit too much today. Like that's a bit too, too mind. Do you listen to them all? Like I would... Pack my topic with him. Aye, yeah. topic. Topic for me as well. Yeah, because like. then, listen- then I would listen to it. Yeah. Well, what sort of stuff would you listen to with Joe Rogan? Um, <laughs> Ellen with Joey Diaz. I was going to say it's very telling what, what you watch on Joe Rogan. Used to. Um, love that one where he's got um, the four lads in. It's like a... It's not parks. Even, oh, protect our parks. Protect, yeah. protect our parks. Yeah. And they just get drunk and messed up. Like Love the one where they're playing like Operation Blade. Smell so screaming. How did... This is brilliant. And they're just yeah. passing out. Stuff, yeah. like. That's all I want from Joe Rogan. I see when he gets serious, I'm like, ah, no. I, mm. I want Joe Rogan just for fucking humour. Yeah. The crack. And I, I, like, he used to be... His stuff used to be really good and intense, but I've just gone uh, off it. He, br- he used why. to bring on just absolute crazies and then his mates, and now they're yeah. bringing on more like commercially kind of people. It's always going to happen, like. Yeah. But he brought on, you know, who really pissed me off when you listened to it was was The Rock. Did you ever listen to The Rock? I never listened. Uh, his, his episode, twenty minutes in, just uh, like, coming hard. Aye, it was just like uh, it was just like oh here, uh, Rock. Would you ever think about this? And then he like did never answered it. He like literally just like said something else and then he's like you know what I mean brother yeah yeah dude yeah and then I was just like what the fuck this isn't a podcast like he was asking questions but he wasn't getting anything from him it was so strange yeah. it was like he was I think The Rock's completely just been taken I think Sorry. people only wanted to know does he do TRT uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 100% <laughs> what they, they know the answer <laughs> is he not make his mid 50s uh, oh, and he is ripped how can a professional wrestler be bigger after he, fin- <laughs> yeah. he finishes professional r- yeah. wrestling like do you know what I mean and like to have the energy to act and do like yeah there's no way that man fits yeah. that all in a day no like that's mental stuff that's like you retiring and you getting absolutely fucking jacked walking around slack nail do you know what I mean yeah it's just got to come to games in the wire mate. <laughs> <laughs> set, set the belly on to the that's, side of it and, you're looking forward to that tell too tell guys to run harder <laughs> more tray bakes yeah. No, very good. Um, welcome, Brandon, again. Sorry. Uh, we do a quick fire. You, you've listened to the podcast. Thank God. Um, I worry. We worry about uh, when people come on. Sometimes they don't they don't realize what the podcast is. Yeah. And they think it's just a chit chat. But then they're like, oh, shit, I didn't know there's going to be questions. And they start sweating. <laughs> if you don't know there's going to be questions, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I know. I know. You're I know. Way but, off the mark. See, if you had listened to the first 10 episodes of this, you might not come on. 
Put it's it not that a singing way. contest, like. No. <laughs> you know, well, there's some crazy stuff talked about in the first ten episodes. Put it that way. First, maybe forty episodes actually. But anyway, quick fire. Well, how do you take your tea? Was that a decent cup of tea I just gave you there? Yeah, it was. Happy. I have a method of how you describe what I like in a cup of tea. Okay. Right. So definitely not milk first. Mm-hmm. No, that's okay. sacrilege. So it would be preferably in a teapot, but it'd be milk yeah. Yeah. or it'd be water first, then tea bag. Or you know, yeah. that mix. Yeah, yeah. And then you put enough milk in to make it look like uh a McBuddy's digestive colour. Yes. Right, okay. Come out with rich tea colour and you need to send it back. Fuck it. What's uh, mine yeah. like? Do you know what I mean? What's mine like? Wouldn't you all say that's that colour, no? Yeah, like it's, it's probably tittering on the edge of oh, maybe... But do you know um, what I mean? It's make, that <laughs> shade of... Supposedly, it's, uh, the perfect colour, supposedly. Do you remember He-Man from years ago? I didn't yes. watch He-Man, but the, yeah. the same colour of his skin. <laughs> supposedly, the, the same colour of He-Man's skin. I <laughs> wonder, wonder what level of be perfect tan you have to get. <laughs> <laughs> say, but I actually gonna disagree with the tea thing. I think you know chemists and all that sort of thing. They put in a certain liquid, and, and you know at the end it becomes the same thing, no matter what you put in. So it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Mm. If you're good enough at making a cup of tea, no, so what are you all nodding your heads for? Two milks, are, two if milks a big problem. No, 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 no. If first. you're if you're able, if you can get the consistency and the level of all your liquids and time and right with everything, you should be able to get it right every single time. Yeah. Just the same way. Every single time. But there's a reason that it doesn't come in a packet like that. Because people can't do it, right? Aye, uh, okay. And it kind of gives me the ick whenever the milk's added when the tea bag and it's just fucking, it just looks I've wrong. done that. There's etiquette. Uh, I, <laughs> I, 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 I do that in a, in a... Did you... Where do you keep your toaster out? <laughs> <laughs> it's exposed. My, uh, my toaster's exposed constantly on, on the counter for everybody to see. For... Uh, Absolute quick fire, convenient toast. Oh, it's just time of the day. Quick, quick, quick. Quick fire, one question. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one actually. Uh, Punjana tea bags or a lesser brand tea bag? <laughs> you've you've changed that question uh, recently. <laughs> no, it would be Punjana and Punjana only. Only. Yeah. Aye, fantastic. Fuck that other shit. I know. Some I crazies about like we've had on this podcast. Or someone said Nimbari one time. No, they get- they're mm. a different level of strength. Like, actually, they're closer to... There's a higher caffeine content in them. That's all right. Yeah. Is it? But I think Thompson's tea is a spin-off of Punjana. Punjana, it is. Aye. It is. So Thompson's, uh, I think, it's, it's Thompson's and then Punjana, like, in terms of the structure. Doesn't it? Thompson's own it. No, Thompson's own it. Aye, Thompson's own it. Yeah, it's the family. All right. Yeah. What, about, what about Barry's tea? Nope. Is that a big thing no. down south? It's it is, yeah. You get here with Barry's tea, it's a big thing down south. Is yeah. Punjana Northern Irish? Oh, it is. I, the Thompson family is so, like a Northern Irish family. It's not uh, factory in s- Belfast there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's like an old, old, old um, uh, Northern Irish or sort of British colonial family, Indian. Right. Mm-hmm. Tea, if you're asking the question, question, I think you would know these yeah. things. <laughs> 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 Welcome to this podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to go on Wikipedia here on the, <laughs> on the Thompson's family in Belfast here. <laughs> Uh, we need Do you get... know why Jude Ke- actually started coming on the podcast? Because he was us? commenting saying, this sucks. <laughs> Aye, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Trolling you in a Facebook live feed. Pretty much, yeah. What are you doing? Asked to ask questions and the person has to go, aye. And they'll be sitting at home going, that's not the fucking answer. <laughs> and then move on, move on. Question answer. I go after these fucking dickheads. Back checking here. Me and Fergal nodded each other. I hope our mics are picking was, up his rant. I'm shouting. I think you were. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Don't worry about that. <laughs> it, was, it was the mouth the legs on a spider. Aye. Wait. I, 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 I said. I said it was eight. Should ask. Should ask. Bet, a many, a many, a many legs does a spider have? I didn't think it was consistent with species. I uh, just if oh, say you like it freaks the movie. Ah though. fuck! Well, you just give him it. You just give him the answer. Uh, I already said it. Did yeah. you know it was eight? I oh, sorry. <laughs> I would have probably said six or eight, but yes, yes, yes Jude. I fuck you, Jude. I I love the fact that people have probably tuned in to listen to this, looking GAA knowledge straight yeah. away. And all we've talked about so far during the season. <laughs> Oh, we've talked about his fucking tea. No, I'm joking. That's, it's coming, it's coming, I promise. Um, Favourite no, tree bake? Uh, I'm going to grab a biscuit. I, I called it an ice fancy before, but it'd be like French fancy. Oh, well, they're lovely. Like, they're kind of rectangular, or thick. 
Yeah, and the yellow got, one or the pink one? Yeah, yellow one or the pink one. Oh, Which man. one do you prefer? Does it matter? Um, okay, I would prefer the, the pink Here, one. They're yeah. near poisonous. Like, they are sugar. Strong, like. oh, but you are, you're not going to have eight of them. I know, I know. That. But whenever I have one, I have a couple more than one. Like, you know. If they come in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Serving suggestion. You don't even look at that. Who makes the best one? Do you know? Uh, Do you have a particular brand? Slamish Baker. Mmm. Yeah. Sort of Sponsor effort. us. Um, Wait and I sponsor myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Be like the local billboarder. <laughs> <laughs> Batman or Robin? Ooh, oh, Batman. Batman. Yeah. Sofa or couch? Sofa. Uh, Pro Evo or FIFA? Are we talking Pro Evo 8? Because um, that's really the only Pro Evo people are talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, oh, where Adriano with 99 Do you remember strength, that? Holy Manchester shit. Reds, mm-hmm. Manchester Blues. Yeah. yeah, you have to rename oh, all the teams and everything. You know, or are we talking the FIFA where you could like pick top corner and curl uh, it in? Like, or is it the new one where you actually have to know what you're doing in terms of like toggling? Let's you can't go. just mesh buttons. I haven't played it in so long. Let's uh, go pre-2005. You know, pick, oh. pick the best out of the oh. FIFA and the Pro Evo from then. Um, Were you, did you start as Pro Evo? Everyone did. Got them both at the same day. Were they cheaper? Was yeah, Pro Evo cheaper it was always like a 45, 35 quid ah, or okay. something. But okay. That explains it. That's probably why so I had Pro Evo. I got FIFA, my brother got Pro Evo. Pro Evo was day. the better game back in the day. Yeah, until FIFA caught itself on the yeah. graphics. Uh, yeah, But FIFA was better because that had the rights players earlier. Mm-hmm. So you actually were buying players... Names. <laughs> well, they weren't making up like spin offs of like Manchester Red, Manchester yeah, Blues yeah. teams. <laughs> New Year packing like yeah. London Whites. <laughs> oh, do you remember Van Mistel Rum? <laughs> Van, Mistel. Van Mistel Rum. <laughs> Him just sitting there like ah, just real 2D face. I love Pro Evo. Uh, Bebo or MySpace? Oh, Bebo. Sharing the love. Sharing yeah, who the was love. your 15 friends? <laughs> 16. No, 16. Was it 16? Yeah. yeah. It was top 16, but then there was a stage towards the end where you could customize, you could have four, you could have 20. Yeah. Most went, people... Went went the dogs towards the end. Like, did, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I loved the most? There was like a wee section where people put in like stories or like... Oh, your flashbox. No, oh, no. Nice. There was there was a bowl of your flashbox where Sweet. people got creative. Wee poems and stuff. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Actually. Or they just read short stories about local people. Uh, yeah. Imagine if you could get back at that. It's all gone. It's all gone. They give us a chance though to get everything out of it. What was your last flashbox? Fla- um, what was it? What, what the ooh, last question. time you set your flashbox? Do you remember? Do you remember? No. No, I don't, I don't even remember that. Old, but that well, was I bad. had Bebo, but it was like Bebo was at the same time as MSN Messenger. Yeah. 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 Aye, aye. And then you had to like. Log out to let someone make a phone call and log out <laughs> <laughs> off the landline. You're just pulling out cables. Someone I remember that messenger thing. Always told told the other person what you were listening to, music wise. Oh, yeah, and I was always caught off. I was like listening to some Stop shit, dramatic. and they're like, "Lad, are you listening?" Some, some of the stuff, I, some of the stuff feels like it should be like modern now. Like it sounds, yeah. it sounds cool. Like, well, the feature of appearing offline and then sit, then messaging someone after going, by the way, I'm still online. Yeah. To tell someone so you didn't get caught with somebody else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now you're talking. So, you dodgy. need that now, look. That's, that's, that's dodgy there. I know. There. I know. Oh. Now we're getting into the, the field before. <laughs> the field. Uh, do you remember nudging people on MSN? Ah, yeah. Just giving wait. Fuck you. Do you think that uh, that kicked off the BBM ping? Ah, that's, uh, right. that's right. right. Yeah. So it was. Blackberry. You watch the movie? Apple, Apple, fuck them, like. Yeah. Blackberry, like Blackberry, mine never really loved it. We keyboard and all. And there's then, only one phone of the Blackberry that people actually remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then Apple launched the, the touchscreen. And yeah. And Blackberry, were like, oh, we can't do that. Well, it wasn't even that. They were like, oh, we no one, no one likes touchscreen. Everyone loves buttons. Right. <laughs> they were wrong. <laughs> but do you not think like? That was what was good about like. Mm-hmm. That's what everyone loved it. If you were in school and the old. Old style where you were like three clicking A and yeah. to get to or to, the number two to get to to C yeah. and things like that. People were actually fit to like text. Oh, well, you could feel the, uh, feel based on fields uh-huh. and send it, and they wouldn't even have to like. And you're that. just going to get to school, reading the message once. Where you go? Uh, you don't have that anymore. You couldn't. Oh, you. We're, we're productive def- text never and you'd be all over the place. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what, what words are going to come out. We're definitely going back in time by the sounds of that shit. Um. Would you rather travel by plane, train, or automobile? 
automobile, but I would like to drive. You, do you get car sickness or anything? No, no, I just would rather drive. <laughs> You've had some dodgy travels. I don't think gonna ask, do you get chauffeured? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> what are your preferred brand of football boot? Uh, Adidas. Used to be uh, the Malice, but I'm on the Predators at the moment. Mm. Predators? Yeah. Well, they're classic, are they not? They fit well. Like, I suppose I would actually notice a difference in like stud pattern and stuff, so that's why I stay with Adidas on, on the feet. New balance and things like that have a different stud position. I just remembered you had one of your boots repaired by the shoe doctor. Yeah, that was old school Preds. Like. There we go. Yeah, you thought Brian Job, like. What's the, what's the other like big boot brands then? Is it Adidas, is it just Adidas and Nike? Or uh, it- you would still have Nike, yeah. The, and Adidas and Nike are probably the biggest. New Balance and then... I didn't um, even know New Balance did. You get the <laughs> really old school guys with Diodora. Diodora? Yeah. <laughs> Class. Yeah. classic GA? Puma Kings? Puma Kings, yeah. Or uh, Puma Copa Kings Mundial. All the way Yeah. Puma Class. Do you see people wearing the Pumas still? They've rebranded them now. Because you know where the, the leather used to be out thick and heavy? Aye. When you got them wet, it was like wearing two blocks. <laughs> they they kind of redone the leather now, so it's not as heavy. So they're actually like okay to wear. Mm. Yeah. I remember Shay saying how bad boots are now, like just in terms of how they used to be. They're just they're really badly made. All of them are just yeah. made for light, but they're made for like cheap couple of matches. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like a, a shoe now or a boot now would be like say 150 pound when years ago it would be 50, and the boot would be like maybe three times superior in yeah. every single way possible. It would do you at least a year, but yeah. now. You- how long does a bit last, you know? Six months, maybe. The amount you play as well. Yeah. <laughs> Six months at best. Like. You have a couple of pairs? Yeah. A few pairs? Um, yeah, you have soft ground, hard ground. And then probably, yeah, three, four pairs a year. That's mental. Yeah. Um, the colour green or the colour orange? Green. Probably best. Um, <laughs> Bill or Ben? Ben. Hot or cold? Hot. Socks up or socks down? Up. Slack nail or dairy? Jesus. Slack nail. <laughs> Squats or deadlift? Squat. What's heavier, a house cat or a squirrel? A house cat. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we think. We think. We haven't tested it yet. Um, do you believe in alien life? Define alien. Um, M- Martian. No, no. You don't believe there's any other beings other than, or any any other being of superior intelligence to the human race other than humans in our atmosphere. No, no. I would agree with that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whatever you put it, our atmosphere in it. Yeah. Well, well the sorry, our galaxy. Earth, <laughs> our atmosphere means Earth. Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Here, <laughs> you, you, across them, I think. You've listened to plenty of Rogan. Like they think. There's plenty of guests that believe there's aliens already here, like so. But you're saying that like it has to be a walk and talk and being. You could have different forces that we don't know about in terms of like physics and stuff like that. Yeah. That probably allude to things. Hmm. Conspiracy theorist. Yeah. <laughs> Bigfoot real or made up? Uh, made up. Made up. Oh, the Northern Ireland Black Panther. Is it real or just a big cat? By cat. Did you hear that? I did. Stories before. Yeah. There's been plenty of them. They like escape from a zoo. I know. Yeah. I think and, they're real. And like you're scared. I'm of, scared of them. He's yeah. still scared of it. Like. Well, you couldn't go to a match without as soon as a row breaks out, there's a phone. Ah. Like within seconds. Yeah. Surely if there was a massive yeah. cat running about the place, somebody would go, Jesus, my cat. Bigfoot Yeah, like you. You'd see him. You wouldn't miss it. Aye. Oh, no, that's and it's not like us walking down the Holy Lands there. Where it's You've known to be scared of. Okay, thanks, thanks. He used to be scared. Whenever I was away and I uh, walking <laughs> home from my friend's house, I would Only always. A few years ago, lad. I would. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> I'd shit myself about like I'd run home, thinking that there would be a. And then I was thinking to myself, well, if I ran and there was a cat running after me anyway, big cat, it would still fuck me up. Like so. But is that not like from watching movies and stuff? You're like. You watch scary movies, and things happen. Uh, and then you're in that scenario, and you're just sort of like, you. Yeah. I, I had to be your mother. Just to me. Read the paper and was just like, watch out for that black. Cat. I think there was you one need, like you need to be home at twelve. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know what it was. Over active imagination, I think. Mm, probably. Um, red sauce or ketchup. 
Uh, it would be red sauce, but I don't take it. Not a, <laughs> not a red sauce guy, believe it or not. It's ketchup. Um, uh, but you're you're sticking to a brand there. Oh, ketchup is what it is. What if it's just a red sauce? <laughs> well, there's no taste. It's not tomato. You didn't ask me if it's it was not tomato ketchup. or chili. You asked me. <laughs> yeah. That's fair, actually. Do you take brown sauce? No. No? No sauce. What sauce would Dry. you take? Sweet chili? Um, or something like that, yeah. But a sweet chili with mayo is nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mashed potatoes or roasties? Oh. Um, uh, a roasty. Uh, gravy or peppered sauce? Gravy. Right, we're moving on to a thing called the Mega Menu. Don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, where would you like the Mega Menu to be? Would you like it to be a nostalgic me- Mega Menu from years gone by? Or would you like it to be Mar- Mahara? Or would you like it to be, say, Mid-Ulster area? So the premise of it is you're able to go to any restaurant of your choosing in the area that you pick. You can pick a starter from one place, um, a main from somewhere else. You can get sides from any other place you want. And then your dessert's the same. You can take a slice of cake or whatever, a tray bake, and then a bit of cream from there, a bit of sauce from there. And you're creating your own mega menu. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it slow, all right? So we'll do starter. Um, would you like to just do it in Mahara or Middle Ulster area? Like it's um me and eatery that you'd eat in is yeah, probably your wee dirty takeaways and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't have to be. It could be a nice meal somewhere. Oh, or, that's true, yeah. You know. Um Jeez, I don't actually go for doing that off, so this is going to be a... Starter. A starter. Uh, potato and leek soup. Mm. Um, from Frills. Yes. That would be a starter. Main. Uh, can I do a split course? Yep. Of course you can, yeah. Yeah, right, oh, so... Uh, Dawson's roast beef. Mm. Oh, my God. Very good. My God. Very, very good. Um, but if I wasn't going to go for like the Sunday dinner vibe and I wanted to go for something different, uh-huh. uh, House of Zen, salt and chili chicken. Very nice. Um, That's always the big decision on Sundays, isn't it? Do, do you go for dirty Chinese? Or uh, no, 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 or no, no, no. Sundays. Sundays Sunday are. Has to be Sunday dinner. Sundays are Sunday dinner. <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> otherwise, Sundays. otherwise, a Chinese would be called a Sunday dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> But a if nice, I'm if nice I'm hung over, meal. If I, a succulent, <laughs> succulent <Chinese. laughs> you don't have that on a Sunday. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> no, if, if I'm hung over on a Sunday and sometimes the drinks got the better of me, like a Sunday dinner could turn me sometimes because there's been moments, there's been moments of like you know you're like mid twenties where you've come home. Mum's made you a big Sunday dinner, yeah, and you've yeah, yeah, and you've yeah, like, yeah, oh fuck, <laughs> I, I can I can't That's hackle a this. Fucking insult to your mother. Uh, what's what what is your Sunday dinner like? What's your what's your spread there? What do you say? Oh, uh, like? be uh, mashed potatoes, uh, honey roasted parsnips, uh, honey roasted pota- uh, carrots, um, like goose fat, roasties. Oh no, you're talking. Um, <laughs> A slow cooked roast beef, then you have to nice. do the gravy and the juice of the meat, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. and broccoli, steamed. I I don't get broccoli much now, but I, I don't I don't disagree with it. Like, it's I I'd replace the broccoli with a cauliflower cheese. That's what we always go for. Yeah, that's that would be yeah. My in laws would go for that cauliflower cheese. That's fucking clever. Um. But it's almost not a vegetable anymore. There's that much sauce and cheese on it. Like yeah. it's, it's you still dirty. Eat, if you were at their house, would you still eat the cauliflower cheese? Oh, well, well what's more is I would have a Sunday dinner at my home place and then I would have drove to hers <laughs> straight away and got a second one. We double dinner. I wasn't fit for it. Told them I didn't want it. Aye. But they give it to you. you, so you you'd have to eat it. Yeah, put it in. So you're two Sunday dinners in. Class. Literally two two-course meals in the space of <laughs> two hours. Like. You and my dog would get on well. <laughs> my dog does that. <laughs> but gets double, gets double dinner sometimes. But you eat that still- much... You're that's it. You're ready to sleep. Uh, ah, why? Ruin the day. <laughs> he his day's ruined. He just can't go anywhere. Take it. You don't train on Sundays or anything like that. Oh, you'd be yeah. It'll be Sunday mornings training. Yeah. Ah, I get it. I and then you're it. just home and you're hungry, so you eat like you're like, oh, I think we bit my yeah. <laughs> and then the calories, you end up going. The calories there. What what about dessert? Doesn't mean it doesn't need to be a Sunday dessert. Just like what's your favorite dessert? No, if I was if I was going out for a dessert, I would probably go for. Um, 
a chocolate fudge cake has to be warm. Mm. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, with custard. Mm-hmm. With custard. Yeah, that's oh, a fight of custard. Controversial. Hundred yeah. uh, percent. Like, I don't don't get me wrong. I like ice cream, but I just the custard keeps it warm. Aye. And the sugariness probably out of sweet tooth. Mm. So just to be, I'd say anybody that doesn't heat their their fudge cake would be a serial killer. Like, it's like why why would you have a hot chocolate fudge cake and not have it hot? Yeah. It's strange, like. Dude, oh, ah, that's okay. I thought you were looking at me there as if, aye, yes, serial killer vibes. <laughs> um, I was actually about to do death row meal, but you kind of give us, you kind of give us it there. Uh, it's a very f- descriptive Sunday dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do, we also do a death row meal, but we're not doing because you kind of did it a wee bit there. Yep. Death row is like you know your last meal on earth. What are you having, sort of thing? Yeah. Um, there's been guys that have been like, oh, 20 steaks, uh, marble lights, um, <laughs> a pint of Guinness, a bottle of wine. That sounds stuff. good. <clears throat> it sound right, Are they just ordering far more so it delays the time you have to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. You makes, know, just an absolute 24 hour rip, like, yeah. straight before. <laughs> makes more of a mess for them, too. Uh, it does, Jesus. Um, who's the three people at your final dinner table? So these these are people like, from past, present, um, it can be anybody, celebrity, friends, family, well, whoever you want, and they're at your di- dinner table, and who would you want at it, you know, in terms of maybe interest in person, or someone you always wanted to chat to, or anything like that there. So three people. Uh, throw in Joey Diaz. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you get a nice Very story good. there. Very good. Well, you just don't know what you would get. But <laughs> it's definitely true. a story. And probably the biggest reason would be the intro we done with Shell Sonnen. Yeah. Well, it was just like a mug to hook her down in New Jersey and <laughs> set her wig on fire. <laughs> Fuck. That was like the very first intro to his podcast. Uh, and I was like, if this is what has ended up in this Sonny, he doesn't know. That man has a litter of things to talk about. Um, right, that's one. <laughs> Uh oh, jeez. Um, Roy Keane. That's a good one. That's a good one. Would you get much chatter than though? I think you would get far more than you would think. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, I think he's got a personality and a what that people don't. They don't want. see. Yeah. They don't want to see you because they think that's the guy that plays football and he passes people off and shouts and all. But like he's, he's a smart guy and he's, uh, he's a podcast or whatever that show that he does with uh, yeah guy. Is it Neville Gar- Gary Neville, I, it's fucking hilarious. Brilliant. Like I'm not a big football fan, but I fucking love it. There, there was a clip I seen today of him talking about going on a stag, how he hates stag dudes at airports, yeah. and then him going on a stag, <laughs> being in one stag do, and he's like, he was walk- going home to change to his uh, room, and uh, people left food out, and he was like stealing the person's <laughs> soup. <laughs> And he was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that is fucking funny. That's yeah. so good. Did you ever read his book? I haven't. Um, he's a very good book. Uh, yeah, think. he's he's just he's got. What's interesting about him is you 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 go into a known uh, sport, but then he's got all other stuff yeah. that goes on that you'd never heard of until you either read his book or he tells you in the podcast now and stuff, and you're like, God, this man's got so many layers to him. It'd be yeah. brilliant. Like he's very interesting. Uh, right, that's two. Oh, one more person. A third one. Um, very eclectic mix so far. Jeez, I don't know. I don't think Joey Diaz and Roy Keane would get on. Well, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get Roy Keane going, give it a, give it a rest, would you? <laughs> Don't you fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. Probably somebody like Kevin. No, actually. Would love to have had him, um, Sean Locke. Oh, the comedian? Yeah. Ah, he's, he's funny. Yeah, he was good. He is. He's funny. Here, do you like Daryl Brain? I do. I, yeah. heard a, I heard a story about you the other day. Um, someone was telling me that they were in your uni house years ago <laughs> and they landed over and they're like, oh, here we're coming. I, don't, uh, I can't mind who it was. Um, I was saying that you were coming on and they're like, aye, aye. They're, they're, those lads are good crack. Like he was saying, he went over to your house one time and uh, he just says you were a different breed of guys. Like he went over, and you boys were playing Jenga and watching Darren O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't deny that. that probably happen, yeah. Oh, we could have. Oh, we'd have played. We could have been playing Jenga and forty-five at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Busy. <laughs> the card game, please. 45. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to play that with my dad, and I swear to God, I've forgotten how to, how, what the rules are. I, I don't, I can't remember. Can you, could you go through the rules now? Can you remember? Do you know it? Do you I watch them? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brent, you're going to have to teach me. You're going to have to teach me. I don't know what this is. So, it's 45 and 25, isn't it? Yeah, That's it's the same game. It's just same game. a bit longer. Just playing cards. Yeah. yeah. So you okay. get five cards and everybody plays their card and then whoever wins that hand gets a trick, it's called. So it's five. But what does so the card get, need to be to win? So it's you get five cards each and then they'll turn over the top of the card in the deck and whatever... Suits turned up as Trump, they call it, mm. and then that's obviously the best suit for the for the for the round. Okay. And then you're looking at higher in red, lower in black, mm-hmm. and then what beats either the number cards is Jack. Then the Queen will beat the Jack. Then the King. Well, not entirely true. See? Jack is actually the second best card in the game. That's right. Yeah. 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 Five. Of whatever suit is is the best card in the game. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. The fingers. Finger. That's fingers. Yeah. Jack. Jack's called the knave. Then it's the ace of hearts. Mm-hmm. Then the ace of suit. Uh-huh. But if you have the ace of whatever turned up, then you get to take it and get rid of your worst card. As right. well. Yes. Uh, and then, sort of yeah. coming back. But the best of it is when you're playing with a full group of people, there's a wee bit of I know what's already been played, and then you're working sort of probability of what's left to be played, mm. uh, yeah. and then. Exactly. When you know it's not in your favour, you have to speech play to make other people think that you have it. Ah, okay. And then you try and get them to beat somebody else to like keep their score down so you have a chance of getting more to get up. Ah, so okay. you're like killing the height, as it called. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a ah, fucking, that's it's a okay. wild game. It's that's a wild that's game. That's but you're playing it with like people who know the rules. See, woe betide you play the wrong card. Oh, you're dumb. Oh, so if I, go, you. if I go with the five first, you can't hold off. So I'd guarantee, you, you must follow suit. If you know what mm. I mean, if I play it first. But then if you didn't play it, then oh. when you go to play it, you've lost that uh, trick. So you've reneged. Ah, uh, okay. And then you can never use it. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah. you're we, watching, did you play that in that, car, in that hand? And you're like constantly. We used to have wild arguments in our house with that game. Like, oh, yeah. dad, dad would never let us win. Like ever. Oh, no. So no. competitive. No, Brad, <laughs> Brad, Brad is very important. Uh, yeah. Big Rose. And he would go over to the club and play it as well and read up. He was oh, yeah. well good at it. So he was. He was playing that game for big money too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a thing where if you bomb deal, you have to put in the pot as well. Really? Yeah. So say you're throwing out cards and one of them flips over, <laughs> then that's bomb deal. You have to go again. There's nothing worse than a bomb deal, though. I, I, I hit. Ruin, I bomb deal every time. Uh, uh, but I hate bomb deals. Like it's a similar set of rules to worst. What is it? Worst. So there'd be a worst drive. They call it. It's an R similar card game. Only suits so predetermined. Okay. Every round, so it's not depending on the card you turn up. You have to teach me how to play that again. Fuck, you need to come back home and bring a second card. <laughs> yeah, we get a second there's, camera. There's a, an we get a second, <laughs> second, second camera down, and we'll watch the table and we'll start. Like <laughs> and you can, you can teach us how to play. Well, even better than that. Uh, so, all the guys in our house, more or less, were from the country primarily. That was the sort of dominance. So, yeah. um, But Ginger was, all, was right in the town. Mm-hmm. Sure, did Ginger get married? this December um, <laughs> we kept saying to him Townies can't win against Countryman <laughs> <laughs> so he was he, and he was a good player to be fair to him but because he's dealing with five other people trying to keep him down just to oh, never let him win <laughs> that's, that's mob mentality well, you were, it didn't matter who won he can't win <laughs> it was just a case of we said this now and we have to see this out <laughs> never Never, I mean, I think the entire time we were at uni, he never won a game. Should have won, only we point blank you bastards. Threw, us, <laughs> threw ourselves under the bus oh. just to make it work. Like. I agree with you. Yeah, that, <laughs> just make a, a wild statement one day and you have to follow through. Absolutely, yeah. Go on, boys, go and leave the townies alone. Like. Uh, We've got fucking street smart. Like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're surrounded, nice. Uh, you are. I will. Indeed. I ah, fucking right. I made absolutely no difference. It was just what can we slag each other for? That, <laughs> yeah. that, that stuck like, yeah. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Right. Fucking 45. Last question of the speed round, which hasn't been that fast. <laughs> um, if, you, if, you, if you could be anybody for a day, who would you be? Walk in their shoes. 
Um, oh, good God. A lot of pressure on that question. <laughs> uh, you can pick someone random, like. That's what I'm trying to do. You're not picking that is. <laughs> That's also out of the table. Uh, sort of like, oh, jeez. Trump. Trump. Fuck. That's a good one. That's a good one. Controversial. But Probably it would be well interesting. Trump and like the 90s. Yes. Nice. That'd be cool. Like, that man was doing whatever. Whatever the, the fuck he was. The wanted. hell he was doing. He, what did he go from? Something like 600 million in debt. Yeah. Yeah. So what, however the hell he was still moping about with that debt and running 45 different things. But like. that's how them guys, not even that they stay rich, but the richest people are nearly always carrying a bit of debt. They're carrying, like it's, yeah. it's they, they use so they, they use that debt and the yeah. asset in that, in that way. Like it's, but it's interesting. Like I would say a man was wheeling and dealing. Uh, do you follow him and stuff now, him with the presidential debates or anything? No. Oh yeah, you see all the stuff coming up, like, and you just kind of like it doesn't matter what Kamala Harris or Joe Biden or anybody else said. Aye. You're waiting for that one killer that line one that liner. he just comes out. Just you, you're not even supporting him. You just know that he's going to say something. It's going to be funny. That's just that's going to erupt them, and just it's like the whole tax code thing. Aye, She's like, true. he's like, yeah, I use the tax code. Yes, because so does your donors, and you're just like, <laughs> got her. All your hits over. He's got her. But they've I, muted, they've muted the mics now. Whenever I, so I, not I, I listened to the highlights of last, I'm pure addicted to it this year. Like I was, uh, listen, I was watching uh, RFK. Um, some of his voice, Kennedy. He's got a, he's got some sort of um, he problem. A disease in his throat. Disease in his throat. He's fine oh, now. Yeah. He's fine. He's chilled now. Like I know that, but it's not called uh, accent. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? Like he, I'm not going to get all American political, but he, he was saying all this stuff that everybody's like uh, basically exposing everything. You know, like the presidential at all American, all the governments are all chatting shit over in America and they're fecking everybody off. But he's literally like, oh, we need to fix our health care. We need to do this. We need to do that. And because of his voice, literally everybody in the comments are just going, what's wrong with his voice? I'm not not voting for him. He sounds like a snake. He sounds like a lizard person. It's just like, he's not even listening to what he's saying. And he's, you know, he's a Kennedy. He's he's, 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 he's presidential royalty, you know. But anyway, um, I I could talk all day. I was actually, James McCakney was messaging me one uh, evening saying we need to have a a podcast during the, you know, there's election day. Yeah. Counting the ballots. (laughs) We We were talking about having a podcast that night. When they were counting the, the ballots and just going to a big conspiracy theory, like talk about the Kennedy assassination, chat about all the things and stuff. Like you'd have to dress up, pick a side, <laughs> <laughs> just pick a side and run with. Yeah, you'd pick Trump, man. Best sounds of it. Anyway, it'd be, the, it'd be the funnest costume. <laughs> it would be the greatest election one ever because everything he does is the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> So huge. <laughs> I'm really big right now. <laughs> did you ever see Shane Gillis? Oh, he's oh, the best. Did you, watch, so did you watch the... Kill Tony? Kill Tony. Yeah. So um, the Dr. Phil too. My God. Oh, that Dr. The, Phil show is amazing. <laughs> the Kill Tony one with him and the thingy doing Biden yeah. was absolutely amazing. Was yeah. absolutely amazing. I watched, I watched the highlights of it. I watched them maybe three times and then I watched the full thing uh, just by itself. But even it's... Facial expressions, oh, perfect. So good. Bang on, and so good. He was he sort of half smirking, like, "Oh, something's coming." <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did well. Well, um, what do you call him as Biden? I, I thought his ba- yeah. the Biden was class. Like, he, was what, like, what, 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 hey. he was just like <laughs> constantly, just like <laughs> get out of here, you punk. Fuck <laughs> 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 was class. So good. That, did you see how big they, they were the other night? They did Madison Square Garden. Yeah, they just filled the place. Joe, Joe yeah. Rogan and I think maybe Shane Gillis. I need to watch it. it looked amazing. Um, brilliant, Brandon. So we actually have a special guest sent in some questions. Um, so we have Lee Costello. <laughs> yes. Um, he's a well-known GA columnist. Do you know him? Yeah. You know of him? Yeah, I know Lee. He's former yeah. presenter of the GAAR podcast. Previously, Lee was a sports journalist for Joe.ie, numerous outlets. Currently, a GA columnist at Belfast Telegraph. And now he's on Puke Football Podcast. Fergal did the branding for him. And he also is well-known for um, the... Uh, East Belfast GAA as well. So and I knew him before all that. Before he was big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just see where he's at. Hello, my name is Lee Costello with the Puke Football Podcast, and I'm here to help John and Fergal out on the Sure What Do We Know podcast as they ask Brendan Rogers some questions. Now, Brendan, I'm sure John and Fergal have already got your head goosed with really analytical 
in-depth GAA questions. They probably offered some suggestions that you're going to be taking to the dairy team, no doubt, um, with plans <laughs> and <laughs> formations and systems and stuff that you know you'll be taking forward with you. But uh, I'll just I'll dumb it down a little bit and and maybe ask some some questions that are, are maybe a bit more fun. But um, there's no really avoiding the whole managerial situation with dairy at the minute. I'm not going to ask you who you think the manager will be because you won't tell me. Um, and you probably don't even know at this stage. It's, it's a bit of a, a mess at the minute. But I do want to know your thoughts on what would it be or what does it mean to you to get a manager from outside the county? Now, obviously, that's something you've done in the past. You, Galler was from from Anna and whatever, but Mickey Hart's obviously from Tyrone. But uh, just with the likes of Joe Brawley and other voices, you know, coming out and being really strongly against uh, managers from different counties taking over uh, the managerial position, you know, and the, and the whole maybe going against the ethos of the GAA and all of that, you know, like what, what are your thoughts on it? Does, is it something you believe in? There we, go. we just put you right in the deep end there, didn't we? Three years under the bus, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't think it, I didn't think it was that bad. I fuck you, Lee. <laughs> to be fair, I know nothing about Gillick, so I don't know what he just said there. But no, I. I what do you I, think? Uh, gonna... He basically was asking you about um, what do I like. What do you think about picking outside a, managers? Picking yeah. a picking an outside manager. Um, I'm not too precious on whether it has to be an internal manager or not. Um, like. Our most recent success has obviously success has obviously been with Roy from Anaman under us, like and um he had similar success and, and Donegal too, like mm. so it's not to say that you can't win with an external manager. We won a national league with it with Mackie Hart. Like just getting somebody local doesn't guarantee you're gonna win either. Um sometimes to get guys with know how, you have to maybe you have to maybe go further afield for mm. a period of time. That might inspire somebody local then to learn oh, maybe I could do this too, yeah. and then they come eventually. Mm. Um, but there's, there's a very small pool of window of, of top-tier managers. Like, um, in Derry? In, in Ireland. In any country? Yeah, in Ireland. Like, it's, it's a bit like uh, the Premier League there. You're for the rank, here's the top five managers, and there's a difference in the next. And um, So really, when you're looking at a manager, you want the guy that, as soon as it goes headline in the paper, or you read it in your phone, you go, Fuck. <laughs> that's a good appointment uh, you know, he, he's the guy and then you're nearly on the front foot before the season's even started mm. you haven't even got on the pitch and yeah. you're raring to go yeah. and that's that's kind of what you're looking for in any manager um, but yeah like you know Lee said about about Joe disapproving this that and the other like but I think he maybe got Brian Mullins to come in a Dublin man to take there in the 90s so um, look it happens maybe it's it's not. It's not easy when you're getting a true man come take Derry. That's <laughs> here. Do you know what? I know nothing. I don't know much about Gaelic. Like, but for a bit for but a no, no. But you see, when that happened, I was like, "What the?" F- you knew this. That's one Hi, everyone. But that's everyone one thing knew. I did know. I was like, "Jesus Christ!" I thought you know, Mickey Hart was you know the the devil, you know, the Messiah of, <laughs> of Tyrone. Tyrone, and then he he stepped over to the, and and that's the one thing I knew. I was like, "Holy shit!" I I actually know something yeah. about this, you know, but. Th- <sighs> there's a, a lot of people from Derry just disagreed with that and that put them on the defensive about it but that was one of them things that I read and went yes that yeah. could be good aye. probably the manager yeah. and we had Gavin Devlin and we slant Neil uh, Horse the backroom coach and I, I was like he was unreal with us mm. I loved him and he taught me a lot of things that carried me on to become a better county player as well so I was like God if, if them other boys get the same benefit I got out of it it's going to be lethal for the team and to be fair it did for to some degree in that you won a National League it's still an All-Ireland title and, and, and somewhere or another um, the rest of the season didn't quite work out that way but you still got that bounce with a manager of a top tier coming to take you and yeah. you do learn a lot so I would I would have no problem sticking an outside man but it's like everything what a story it would be if you had somebody from a local town or you ah. went to the same school as you or, and if you're fit of luck at that guy and him to take you there it's a different type of yeah. team mentality um, because you know he's one of you and, and all that mm. kind of stuff, but it just it's not a reality everywhere not, you go. Like, it's going to happen. Stars won't always align. Yeah. If Mickey Hurd had a took took the team the whole way there, sure, he would have been the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, like, so, exactly. So you're not, so not going to win. You're not going to kick Pep Guardiola out of Manchester City just to get 
Sorry, man, in the commentary. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you yeah. want the best person for the job, and you want the best person that's a fit for your team too. Like, yeah. Um, so a quick one, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Lee, you didn't tell me they were going to be this. Uh, Jesus. Nice it was a great question. And then my next question, um, in the league final against Dublin, you had a bit of back and forth against Brian Fenton, you know, one of the best midfielders ever, ever to play the game, probably. Um, it was very funny. You guys were like really going at it, squaring up to each other, pushing, shoving, all the usual handbag stuff. And then both of you almost burst into laughter and just started hugging. I was just wondering, who, how, you know, how did, how did you break that tension? Because someone obviously cracked a joke or something. And was it you? And what did you say? Or what did he say even? Why are you hugging, boys? <laughs> <laughs> it, Go ahead. Uh, it was kind of one of them things where... Explain the context of the match. Yeah, so we played Dublin in a Division 2 final league final the year before. And then we both got promoted in the same year, so the top two teams go up. Then the very next year, which was last year, we meet them in the Division 1 final. And I guess because you're playing them a lot more regularly, we were quite new in the scene, had won an Ulster Championship then. We were seen as an up-and-coming team and... They're obviously still one of the, the pinnacle teams in Ireland. Mm-hmm. So it was a case of they probably wanted to set their stall out as being still the big dogs. Don't let the new guys come and walk over. So it became a rivalry overnight type thing. Mm. And we had a couple of, we beat them in Celtic Park. There's maybe, maybe 19,000 at it. It was brilliant under lights Saturday night game. Mm-hmm. Then, um, yeah, we got to play them in Dublin in a final. There was loads of noise and everything at it and it was a game that went to extra time then went to penalties but yeah so I suppose we were very familiar with ourselves at that stage um, but it was just one of them bits in the game where you know somebody tries to get in the referee's ear then you're trying to like I can see he's getting the referee's ear I need to get in his ear <laughs> <laughs> um, you know and it was just one of them things where we weren't having to go at each other but um, it's like everything you're He's a big guy too, like so. You have to be physical. You have to be aggressive. Um, and then I just goes, just sort of you're sort of shouting at him, be like, "I save your breath. I'm gonna take you for a run up the pitch here." <laughs> and then you're just trying to dig him and push him, and I say, "Come on, come on, big man. I'll take you up there. I'll take you up the pitch here and stuff like that." <laughs> and because it's not in a nasty tone, or it's not aggressive, and you're nearly like pushing this, like armor right, in the on. back. Come on, that's the way it should be played. Like, and he's not a nasty guy, and that. He's not your typical dirty player. Yeah, like every top player, he'll hit you if you need hit and all that kind of stuff. But um, we've marked each other a bit, but there's not that. I hit him. You just respect what he's done. Mm. But by no means, I'm going to let you walk over me. So yeah. um, uh, it was just one of them things that just materialized. But it wasn't really until after the game that I realized we were on the shot for the camera, but it was also on the big screen at the oh. time. <laughs> So oh, like, a, like a kiss cam <laughs> oh, yeah so it wasn't just on TV it was everywhere. everybody saw it <laughs> and I was like oh god but you know when you go back to your phone you're like fucking hell 45 messages what is this about and then, <laughs> then you're looking at Twitter and Facebook and you're like I'm not that active I don't know 50 notifications here and it was just it was just that same clip over and over and over just again like, saying, yeah, picture. oh god and then you're like what did I do you know when it comes up uh, you're like yeah. I don't remember that did I do something here or did yeah. it not but it was it was grand it was all in good good taste like but oh, uh, I so sort of forget that everyone's watching <laughs> division one finals are televised <laughs> <laughs> You're on. the television's on yeah People I guess one of the best footballers kind of all time yeah um, yes yeah, you're going to be on the camera <laughs> yeah Live big brother. Is that how much you switch off to like what everything else is going on oh you don't pay attention to anything, anything. else uh-huh. you're totally aware of just the play just the match what's happening may not look at half the time you're sort of <laughs> what is he doing did you have to learn that or was that always no no I was learned um, a lot on the Rory Gallery it was just a time where we thought we did video analysis we thought we knew what the teams were doing he took it to a new level a new way of thinking to the point where you're going and the video was thinking what is he thinking of next mm. so you're starting to watch games in a different light mm. and then uh, yeah it just gets to the point where you do the video that much you're fitter to start seeing it and training in games Right, and okay. then when things are happening in the games you're sort of you're seeing it happen yeah and you're kind of looking at each other players going we've literally done this a thousand times this is 
it's a cakewalk because you're sort of knowing how to counteract it at times. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but it was one day just, I remember uh, we were doing like a McKenna Cup game, worst night of the year. I think it was against Fermanagh. It was a washout of something like a a 10 point to 9 point game. A real game of the ages type stuff. (laughs) And I mean, you know, like you go into the corner with the ball, it's packed defence, you recycle it out again, you go to the other side and try and get shot. And I just thought, not a run on the ball club, and he just went, stop. Imagine if you ran there, and you ran there, and you ran there, on how your players move. So he's changed a still frame as like a, like a yeah. chessboard. Yeah. yeah. And I just went, I'm watching this all wrong. And that mm. was my penny drop day. See. And if, from then, I've never been fit to watch games in terms of video differently. Just, uh, I'm now thinking... What if the chess pieces were moved? Yes. You're constantly playing that. You're not watching the game that you're watching anymore. That's some ch- that's some change in perspective as well. Like. Totally. And I just like I was I, I traveled to Crossy McKeague a lot, and um, we both sort of silent the way home, and just looked at each other and went, "Did the penny drop you the night?" And you're like, "I was thinking the same thing." <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was the same moment for both of us, and we we're just like, "That's that's class. That's the diff- that's that's the levels then." Yeah. You, Very uh, interesting. I think you can't really enjoy, can you enjoy watching a match now oh okay. do you but I enjoy watching games that people think are shit because mm. I'm looking at like people are looking oh I'm watching a player here and I want him to get on the ball and kick a ball from 60 metres over the bar and everybody applaud that and watch it for 30 years to come but sometimes it's the devil in the detail and the nuance of how somebody's just ran somebody out of the way cut in again made an or angle made space for somebody else space, yeah. yeah it's more of a team tactical thing so you can't watch a game from TV, it's crap. You don't get to see how ten other people You're have just it. paved the way for somebody else to come in. Like, mm. it's, it's unbelievable. That's but, interesting. Yeah, I actually had to explain that to my mother. She now watches matches live differently. <laughs> yeah, she's watching for other people. She's not kind of watching the ball, yeah. the guy in the ball anymore. She's watching the people doing runs to get yeah. people out of the road. And then you wonder move. why does somebody get their place? But that, that's why because they're doing that job to give somebody else uh, a chance yes. to flourish mm-hmm. and if it doesn't work out they're able to come into the play again mm. so you're wondering oh, oh, that, man's, that man's playing shite or what he hasn't touched the ball all day but his job wasn't to touch the ball Yeah, his job was to take that really good say defender out of the play all together <laughs> to let somebody else have so a so those old those old guys with the, the big bellies that are that you just mentioned at the Get start that you're going to be he's like they they don't understand the you know that boy never touched the ball he did fucking nothing that day uh-huh. when actually his job was to yeah pretty much like what do you think brought in that, that like step up in tactics over the past sort of 10 15 years now Roger, longer maybe um so because everybody started getting to a level where fitness is much of a muchness that seems to be the only difference. And then that's all everybody looks at then because tactics is one thing. If you're set up right, you have, you have a good foot in the game. And then the other thing that comes down to is skill execution. Like the difference in you giving a ball... To me? Wrong. Say, like, Rod, you want it there because there's a man up your ass. So to evade him, you want it to be the furthest away possible. But if I give it here, it's a 50-50 chance the defender could get it. Turn over, you're down the pitch again. And it generally could be a tit for tat game, but if if you if you miss your chance, you're now one behind. Yeah, and then you're constantly chasing, mm. and then yeah, it becomes a bit more finely nuanced. And and as much as people want to go back to the whole, let's kick her in, let's let's keep and kicking and kicking. <laughs> you could play the worst game of football in the world, but if you won the All Ireland final, your supporters don't care. Mm. Yeah. Like, you think it's the best day ever, it's the best day out and we love the atmosphere and our kids had a great time and look at the colour and the flags and people don't really care because everybody, as years go on, everybody's ear was the best. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the more stories go, the better they get. Mm-hmm. Like somebody who's a great footballer, they could have been muddling. <laughs> they, had a, they had a decent day at the office one day, but that day just gets bigger and bigger as years go on and he was an all-star player and he never played for his county. <laughs> <laughs> And then they're like, do you mind that day we played in the face cup down? The uh, and the penny dropped and the, yeah, and the perspective. Like, he caught this ball, he left like a salmon, he was eight foot in the air. He, he knocked two men out of his road and kicked her over from 60 metres and you're probably thinking, there was nobody near There's him. There's no one there. It, was a fast it just dropped him. And it, and it went wide. He panicked. He shooted up in the air and the one carried it over. <laughs> 
Fuck that sounds familiar <laughs> I was seeing a lot of people About old Sega games and all And my father-in-law Played for St Gauls And the likes And there was a club They played in an Ulster club final Against against Burn in 1967 Jeez. It's on YouTube mm-hmm. <laughs> the fuck God, is The horse gave up on <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Is this your father-in-law? Did you yeah. say? It's Jeez. funny. Six four. Was the balls like pigskin back then? Yeah, they were pigskin. <laughs> but was it even better, right? You know, every free wasn't taken out of your hands back then. It was all off the deck, oh, oh, sidelines oh, and all included. Oh, all of them. Mm-hmm. So a some mess. boys were like terrible. A mess. <laughs> and there was a ball went out over the sidelines. So the cameras on one side, the ball was in the air, and that's the crowd was. I think it was in like Lisburn or somewhere. The game was. Somebody on the sideline and kicked it out. Didn't even go on to play again. Straight back out over a sideline. And then a left footer comes along and he repays the favour and gives it back to him <laughs> over the sideline. <laughs> then this guy tactically again says, I'll have another go at it. And managed to kick it out over the wire, over this, the mound of a hill into the car park. And but there was only one big skin ball. ball. So the game was just sitting there waiting for some man in the crowd to go down. <laughs> <laughs> to get the ball Best and bring it back <laughs> and I'm sitting here for about three or four minutes on a YouTube clip going you know when you hear that ticking of like a uh, deep record of a record over ego round and I was like what is this <laughs> shit best game of football ever you're poor father <laughs> <laughs> like, some of the points scored were outrageous they're talking like a man just won a stupid ball on like the sideline the 13 whooped it over his shoulder and it's over the bar and the crowd's going yes but they couldn't kick it over from 20 metres in front of him <laughs> and, you know, and like say if you won a ball and you're in space and you could have ran it 80 metres oh no 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 as soon as you hit the ground it has shooed back up there <laughs> it wouldn't matter if you didn't have anybody there yeah. it was just going back they weren't running no. <laughs> if, if you look up and nobody's running or if somebody is running, it's kicked either way. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you wanted it or not, it was going. I think if that's what people want to go back to, good luck to them. Like, <laughs> you won't be involved. Big shoe. <laughs> Fuck, that's hilarious. There's another one from Lee. Moving on then, just to Slack Neil and the whole dual club situation. Um, one of the few clubs in Derry, you know, that are dual, like properly dual in the sense that Hurling's treated just as equally as, as football is, and then you've got other counties, you know, in the lakes of um, Tipperary, you know, maybe more the the Hurling counties, where Hurling would be, we would get the preference. But Slacknail do seem to find a real, a really good balance, uh, which is rare here in Ulster, where football is probably, well, it is the most dominant sport. Um, Lockmore Castellini famously uh, train the two sports together in that, you know, they might do the warm-up Hurling, and then they'll go into a bit of football, and then in the bit of hurling, in the bit of football, and then week on week, you know, one week they play a football match, the next week they play a hurling match. And to them, it's just GA training. It's not hurling training. It's not football training. It's all one and the same. And it's like this really idyllic uh, world of, you know, how how dual sports should be, especially in the GA. Um, what do you think of that sort of concept? Is that something you'd like to see come into teams in Ulster? And is it even achievable, really? That's what we do now. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, well, again, We've, uh, oh, well, so when we started uh, one and a bit for Slack and the other around mm-hmm. 2013, 2014, we had just done, you have a football game that week, you only train football that week. The next week is hurting, because that's the way it was. Anyway, it was just, week on week, it just changed. just changed. So we just went, if you're a dual player, you just do that that week, and the hurting the next. And then the non jewels will still train the same nights, they'll just do it with less numbers accordingly. Um, and then sometimes, then if there was a say there was a gap of like the league was over before the championship started, you'd have just done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, off Saturday, maybe a league game Sunday. You'd have been out every night of the week. Mm. And I'm looking back on now, going, Madness. How the hell did I do that? But you were young and you didn't care, and you're just you're out playing, you loved it, you're one, and it didn't matter. You, you couldn't have got hurt, you were. You're, you're on the crest of a wave. Everyone was brilliant. You're thinking, mm. this works. We're, we're winning here. But uh, we realise as you get older, that's absolutely crazy. So, yeah, we do duels, train sessions. So you'll do, you split the time up, say it's like um, 50 minutes or an hour and 10 for one and 35 for the other or 45, whatever the balance needs to be, depending on, you know, ge- what game is priority at the weekend. So you mm. obviously try and 
poke a lot, but you don't lose out in the skill orientation of it. Um, but then you think about how can you train smarter. You don't have to do like the running twice, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Say you want to get uh, conditioning done for both teams. Well, if you're doing them two different nights, the dual player had to do two sets of running. Yeah. But it's all for the same one goal, which doesn't make sense. So um, you kind of, the footballers will go first, the hurlers will come second. But the hurlers that are coming second will have already warmed up and then the dual players will just switch over and not have to warm up again. Mm-hmm. And then if there's any condition to do it's on that window between changeover. So all football and hurling of the club do it all at the same time. But then the managers get to see what all managers are doing in terms of like managing their players better, mm-hmm. gets to understand players. And then the fact that everybody's training on the one night, you might find that people will actually do both then because they're actually not out any more nights of the week. Ah, so it before, encourages before them. Before there was competition, like still some clubs. Yeah, clubs there's competition. yeah, but we're uh, we're awesome. we're a niche in that we could have twenty odd players mm-hmm. playing both. Yeah, wow. yeah, and that's rare. And then the starting players on both teams is quite high. So the same starting players actually starting both teams. Which, that's the game's very uncommon. That's why we're a wee bit niche. Other clubs are quite yeah. They do both, but they might only have one or two. But they wouldn't. Even, but they wouldn't start in both teams. They might be benching the one, starting the other. Um, whereas we're quite dominant in that good players are on both teams and they're quite dependent. These are all talented basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely mental. Uh, that is actually uh, mental. Does that happen down south much? Not really, no. Um, like, Because not many clubs are in that scenario to make it work, but to try and make it work long term, we, uh, well, that's probably all thanks to Chris McKaig. He's starting to do that in the club and that he got implemented underage as well. So that mm. all underage is also dual. Oh, so that'll just carry up. So then. it's just wow. But the, but then you're increasing your participation chances yeah, because yeah. there's not going to be oh my wins are going to football night not hurting. Your friends all go and do both all at the same time. So oh, why yeah. not just do it? Now likelihood is like most clubs, you get to minors and boys go ah maybe I don't want to do that anymore. But that's fine. But you're probably increasing your chances. Of, Definitely. Yeah. Because you're going to have to go at the same time, and if you're not going to yeah. play football. Your manager's going to be there and see. <laughs> but even at that, you'll find that it might suit people better because um, you're looking at, they might want to do swimming the one night and whatever, but you just help organise that you're getting both both GA sports in the one night and you might be fit to do something the other night because when you're kids, you want to balance and all as well mm. rather than yeah, the parents. The, or the, rather than the seven nights a week. Yeah. And like if you're, an, say you have two or three kids and they're all separate nights, That's all different nightmare, times, right. you'll be up and down that road all night. Whereas now yeah. even the parents come up it's a dual session. They get both in the same night, so they'll just stay at the pitch and maybe walk around, get their steps up. There's a like a, a mobile coffee hut there, or sometimes if there's a game on, so there's tea. It's sociable. It just changes the Big dynamic community. of the of the community, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's trying to breed a culture of yeah. That's all, impressive. Yeah, very yeah, impressive community. Um, yeah, good question, Lee. Didn't think you. Didn't think he was that good. He's <laughs> <laughs> only asked the question. I give the answers. <laughs> ah, yeah. well, me um, again. It's it's going slightly back to the the whole manager situation, and in particular, Mickey Hart. You're going to be asked a lot about Mickey Hart, I'm sure. Um, I was just wondering out, outright. There a lot of rumors went on about players looking to oust him and all the rest of it. Uh, he did stay at that time and then you got a big win against Mayo and it sort of looked like things were quiet and, and then obviously he took a decision to leave himself afterwards but what I wanted to know actually was when he took the job the fear was from Derry fans and just you know GA fans in general that he was maybe uh, or potentially he was maybe past it in the sense that he wasn't very he might not be very modern you know in terms of tactics and the play defensive football I think that maybe wasn't the case you know with the way that everyone got forward and all the rest of it but would you say, were you afraid of that when he came in, that he might not be as, as modern and as advanced as uh, other managers and they may be a bit old school? And then what, what were your thoughts on that specifically? Just not forget about everything else um, uh, around Mickey Hart, but just on his tactics, how he treated uh, players, all the rest of it. Would you say he was your like a modern manager or very old school? I suppose the, the, the dynamic that I was always aware of when he took the job was that he was the manager, Gavin Levin was coach. Mm. So you're not really hearing, he might have a, a state of play, but that's discussed with Gavin and they'd have that conversation together based on the players that they've got at their disposal. Mm-hmm. That's that's what people have to appreciate. You can have a state of play all you want, but 
you don't have the players to do that. Yeah, you have to tweak it and make it work. So Gavin done all the coaching, Mickey done the managerial side of things in terms of talking to players and stuff. But in terms of tactics, it would have been a joint mm. venture in terms of video analysis and things like that. So I wasn't really you know, under any illusion that Mickey's not going to be out there at you know in his late sixties trying to G boys on and kick balls out behind the nets <laughs> and stuff like that. That's that's not going to happen. He's, yeah. um, he's he certainly speaks on you know collectively and things like that brilliantly. But yeah, I wasn't yeah you know, wasn't expecting them to get the bits on. <laughs> 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 stage, you know? So I was I was happy enough with the dynamic. I knew what it was getting, so it didn't take me by surprise. But um, no, I can't imagine anybody else. God, you'd have been totally off off page if you thought he was coming out coaching like and. But he's does that change things? But he's a that, winner. Yeah. God, he's a winner. Mm. Doesn't matter what age that man becomes. When his voice, there is no mellow in my time. He wants to win. <laughs> Doesn't matter if we we're playing forty-five or playing Jenga <laughs> at the same time. He's winning. That's it. And it's just that mentality. And when he speaks about it, not in a bad way, but you know when somebody's got that sort of venom in their voice that. I'm one here at all costs and I'm, I'm driving you on. That's him. Mm. It's not a, I'm saying this to get you going. Aye. I think that just is him. It's really in him. Aye, and he, he, can't, he can't lose that winner's age. Mm. If, he, if he didn't have that age, he wouldn't be where he's at now anyway. Because yeah. it's that winner's age that makes him go, I want to go manage again. That man's driving from Ariel Kieran now to Offaly mm. to manage. So, Aye, at that age. Because he's that, he's that age to play you know, to play his part and to do his bit. And, you know, man management's a, a behind the scenes thing anyway. For the most part, you're dealing with players maybe on a more individual basis. Um, Obviously, you're, you're hearing collective messages between them, but probably the most of the stuff he does is not seen. And that's that's the balance of a, a manager coach. The coach gets to do all the visible things. The manager can do a lot of arm round guys or, or give them the the rattle on the back whenever you need it. <laughs> well, you mentioned as well, whenever we were talking earlier about whenever he was, it was kind of announced and, and your reaction at the first announcement, yeah. you were like, holy shit, this is great. So yeah. he's, 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 he's obviously a talisman as well, like to, yeah. to have a, a person like that in the back room, in, in that sort of role for the team. You want a proven one or two. Mm-hmm. Like he's, man, has got three All-Irelands, whatever Ulster medals is behind him. You're sort of going, pedigree of one of pedigree. Like you, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter what county you You from. think if that's going to get me two, three percent to one top honours, absolutely. Like, mm-hmm. name me manager still coaching today with the same honours. That we w- we won't know that answer. Just just letting you know. <laughs> we, we don't know that. Then, <laughs> here, hopefully, hopefully Lee has it here. Hold on. As text Lee there. <laughs> right, I swear, there's th- these are over soon. And then lastly, I'm not sure. But there's four uh, more buddies. You'll answer this, but. <laughs> There has been links with James Horn. Um, I have no idea what you said about the the first question in terms of getting managers in from a different county. But uh, James Horn's obviously from Mayo. Um, I just heard that. I know you're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, fill uh, rumours and newspapers and all the rest of it with the idea of James Horn coming in. But I'm going to ask you anyway. And just let's say hypothetically, so this hypothetical world that's happened, it's too late. He's the manager. How, how would you feel about that? Like, just because of his style of football, what he's done with Mayo, um, do you think he could be a good fit uh, for the current crop of dairy players? Hypothetically. Yeah, I, I do think he'd be good because he hasn't, he didn't win in All-Ireland, right? But he was producing a Mayo team, which obviously had a talented group of players, and he was managing to pitch them against Dublin to extra times and stuff year after year and albeit they didn't get over the line but he's probably competing against the best county st- side ever. ever never not just of a decade ever uh, it's probably ever the, the, mm. the most all Ireland's consecutively like that's not exactly a gimme team they were playing like, <laughs> and maybe six seven finals he's been involved in like sometimes you have to say maybe it's it's unlucky mm. so he's able to produce top level athletes to get to that pinnacle all the time you surely be looking at that going, God, if he gets me in that order or gets the team in that order, organised to get to that point, you just think, you know, the players obviously have to take a bit of responsibility themselves that it's up to you to get over the line. Mm. He's done everything he can to get you there. He was Mayo, wasn't he? Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't bring the curse one. 
<laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's all for me. I'm going to leave you in the good hands of John and Fergal, who will ask you far more intelligent questions regarding football, I'm sure. And I'll hopefully see you all soon. Thank you. Oh, that lovely pout on the photo he has over the back there. <laughs> Where? Oh, there, yeah. 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 He, he's letting on, he's drinking them. Uh, I get a What would that be? I get a uh, it? Is it? Porn star martini. Aye. But... Uh, no, that's a pout. That's blue, <laughs> that's blue steel there. Doesn't he, look, doesn't, doesn't he look like he's trapped in the TV? <laughs> or, or that's like a, a message from the future? That's like the Truman Show. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Poor Lee. Poor Lee. Thank you very much, thank Lee. You, thank you, Lee. Lee that was great. Us. Very good. Contacted another day. I goes, oh, fuck, I don't know nothing about Gillix. <laughs> yeah, you help. <laughs> oh, we, had a guy, we had a guy on there a few weeks back and he knew a wee bit about Gillick. You got that box yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lee. Hopefully Lee. that'll suffice anyone that's on the, listening aye, to this. Aye, aye, hopefully. We were Watching. talking about crazy stuff aye. at the start, so... Um, I, I'll make everybody aware that there's a wee, there is Gaelic parts. In this. <laughs> there is G. I think everybody will go. Yeah, I bet he's talking about football. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like your socks up or down? <laughs> <laughs> switching off this. Switching off this. I would maybe turn put everyone off. And ah, I, <laughs> I might edit this and put the quick fire at the end. <laughs> Here, can I add one to the quick fire? Of course. Come over. <laughs> is that the watch? Uh, Very good. I'm uh, another sport. <laughs> just hanging out, take a quick nip to the toilet here, um, and then we'll come back and we're doing the origin story. What was I listening to? I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast. I just see you vaping. A guy that he. You don't mind? <laughs> no, no. Like, it's not for me, obviously, but. Uh, Shouldn't so, be for me either. Tear away, but he was saying a guy he knows was like diet and just diabetic. So he changed his diet and all the rest, but then you know why you wear the glucose monitor and right. they were like, God, it's still high. What what is it? I'm off all these things now. But the Fuck sweeteners off. and stuff that were in the vapes were spiking his glucose. Fuck off. So they were like, probably it was never the diet in the first place. It was just a, a chain vapor. <gasps> so it was the vape, it was just them to be slight well. That was, I'm sure that you may not have had the best diet either, but you're looking at like things that still trigger them. Was that was one? But of them. They're shocking sweet, so that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I was like, God, I, I would never. I never, never thought that. Picture that. I thought, oh, he's just hammered about four or five sugars into his tea in the morning or something. <laughs> Go and get off the vapes there, for a Probably, aye. Yeah. They're bad stuff, like bad news. Vapes are bad. I guess. Still rock climbing. Ah, not as off. I went there last week for the first time in months, but it was sore in the body, was it? No, it wasn't too bad. I didn't go that hard, to be honest, but it was, uh, it's good to be, it's good fun, like, it's so much fun. Have you done it? I went to, you know, the PC, Queens? Aye. Oh, yeah. hey. But the, the long? Yeah, one. well, I didn't go very high on it. I just thought, ah, oh, I'll, I'll do a couple of runs here. And I was like, you, you pick a colour and say, oh, I'll, I'll, I could do that. Absolutely not. Couldn't do that. Ah, it's tough. God, didn't, re- well, you have to realise body with a massive thing in that too. Mm. Like, yeah, but you have... The, the body of a, probably, yeah. aye, of, a, of a climber like you're, you're, I think you'd be very fucking good at it. just a couple wee lessons you'd be fucking class it's probably the fingers very oh, sore man. very sore like see them guys that climb actual cliff faces yeah like, this wee pouch of chalk <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> you got a lot of things in your mind <laughs> <laughs> something wrong with you it's man. good fun like it no, really they'd, is they'd probably watch you play hurling I ah, fuck that. <laughs> Why would you do that? I know. <laughs> Those boys diving at balls going a hundred and odd miles an hour. Like, yeah. Uh, I actually just realised there's listeners' letters here still to do. This was the we did it's like, like an agony ant thing, is it? Uh, no, they're not asking you for advice. <laughs> they're not asking you, mate. Plenty of them were fucking cheeky bastards, to be honest with you. So, yeah, probably. Um, a lot of them. There's a, f- a good few. I'm not going to even mention. Uh, you just know who you are. I don't know who you are, but you just know who you are. <laughs> uh, probably it's a really personal question. You're going to go. There's only two people in the room. That <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be down very quickly. There's stuff here I can cut after I ask it. Don't worry. All right. It's nothing like personal, but some of them are being wankers anyway. Excellent. Not to you, but just in general. Uh, we can cut them if you want. I don't care. Um, but you can listen to it after. Anyway, listeners' letters. <laughs> uh, who is the worst referee in Derry? And why is it Gavin Walker? <laughs> um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Do you know Gavin Walker? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do? Uh, I, well, it's like everything. You just 
get to know people all the time. It's the same. Ah, it's yeah. a small circuit of people, but um, depends. Depends on the game. Like um, football, could be the referee could be your best friend for the day, but then if it's one that loses you a championship, he's worse than the order. So <laughs> yeah. it depends. It depends what time of year you get them. Like, but most of the time, no, I'm not too bad with referees. Thank God. Um, yeah. And you know, Gun Marker's bad too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even he's a, he's one of probably the new guys in the scene no I don't think he's he's not too badly no he's not good um, <laughs> do dairy players get paid other than expenses no so well you don't get paid as a wage so you do uh, Sport Ireland do a GPA oh, it's part of the GPA like Players Association program um, where they try and give you sort of like a reimbursement of mm. your time and effort essentially yeah, yeah. grants like 1500 euro in a year but you're subject to anti-doping testing and stuff then so mm. you're under the world anti-doping agency so you get tested and stuff the way professional athletes do no drugs no money oh, oh if we're banned if you fail a drugs test that's you out of all sport yeah. that's you out of golf the whole lot it's mm-hmm. not like it's a oh you're you're getting a slap on the rest of the county board this is you yeah. legally binding in the same way as they would at the Olympics same test same same group of forever you, you can get up to four years fuck so like and you're back playing reserves. No, you wouldn't be allowed to play that either. You're out. That's you out. Right. That's it. Career's over. Jeez. And then you're obviously the guy who's been druggy. That, that's the, ah, that's well, the stigma. Yeah. You're painted that way. Yeah, so it's it's all well and good that you get a bit of money, but you don't get paid. Like it's, that's, that's not. It that's does not nothing. cover your... No. Of course it doesn't. doesn't cover the food. doesn't cover the Anything. travel. It doesn't cover yeah. the time. Like I do more hours training a week than I work. People, That's say, people say, oh, you don't work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're not just, you're not just going like that. You're just, but you know what I mean? When you think of it, like, imagine having a second job and not getting paid for it. Aye. Yeah. My dollars you put in for it. Yeah. Though. And it's That's not like, it's clubs hand people like, oh, I train in my club so many nights a week, but you're going a wee bit further in your club. It's distance. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you're going away for like games that are weekends, so you're going playing care, you can be away Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So don't see your family back to work again. Mm. It's almost like you've just, you're always working, yeah. you know what? You didn't have a weekend. There's no weekends, mm. and people are like, "Ah, oh, you pick your choose your your life and all." But it's, it is in many ways. But you're sort of thinking you wouldn't do it that way. No. Yeah, hundred percent. Just because takes... just because I'm lethal at my sport doesn't mean <laughs> I have to give up my time. <laughs> but I wonder how many people probably were good enough, but just didn't choose. Like decided, oh, just loads. didn't have the commitment for it. Loads that were uh, probably deadly players, but just yeah, loads. Just, I uh, would say now, it's like if you can cope with the lifestyle and get a certain level of fitness, you'll probably go a fair bit of the way. But that's that's a big if. People think, oh, he's a late club player, he'll definitely make county. And I'm like, no, it's a big shock for people's lifestyle. Mm. Massive. You can't you can't get away away. Even things like going on the drink. Or... Say I went to the shop and was lifting all the, the party food or whatever, the crisps and whatever chocolate and I was going up the counter you think people wouldn't go day players get to eat that <laughs> do you know what I mean uh, yeah. because you're people would see you and things like that they'll think oh I can do that under the microscope yeah mm. pretty much so your your scrutiny just goes from being nobody cares to everybody cares yeah just overnight does that pressure get to you do you like is there no it doesn't bother me one but does it not no because I didn't I'm all in that's, that's just that that is my lifestyle now yeah. I don't know any different that to me is how I think everybody should love their life but <laughs> it's not reality but thankfully my wife and all she plays Kamogi and plays her day as well and it's kind of so she's loving the same life as me we, it, yeah we're, we're totally on the same page here there's there's no issues um, going to training not surrounded by disciplined people then oh yeah much. like I go I like jam at home and dad comes out and trains with me like it's it's not just he, he would ring me and say you coming out so it's, it's not like a I'm constantly driving myself there's people with you then that take you along when you yeah. don't want to do it so. and that's probably what it takes as well that's probably maybe the difference between yeah. yourself and someone that give up because takes everyone a, around them was like let's go on the takes a village yeah this is a this not a quick fire question <laughs> <laughs> sorry no this one this one I, I wanted a silence because this is going to be like the might first have, cut of the deepest might, might have to edit it what happened in Portugal oh Jesus I mean, take this as the final, literally nothing. And I, when I say literally nothing, 
was literally nothing. Well, I came home and there's all these stories about boys fighting and stuff. See if there was even somebody had a sh- you know done a late tackle and training and they held each other by the throat for a couple of seconds and you had to split it up and go on. You know that happens in every team sport. That's yeah. I mean, if it had been something like that, you could have said, "Oh, I then but pushing match." Literally not. I couldn't have went any better. Mm. <laughs> Everybody get on. Like the team gets on. It's not like the days of old where. Slant Hill boys and Glen boys had two different tables and don't speak to each other and uh, it's rivalry and you throw fucking peas at each other across the <laughs> across the dinner table and I'm not speaking to him or I don't pass him the it's not I mean it's so mixed fake news like unbelievable but it never stopped if anybody gets a, if anybody gets a uh, sniff or something like it just happens but then the people kept saying it again and again as if you, you don't have a good day so that's because them boys had another fight at train ah uh, yes, yes literally and everything just spiraled. and it was sticking and my family was laughing I go and You'll never guess what happened this week. And I mean, to the, even to as much as two days ago, I'm still hearing rumours. Mm-hmm. Not just about Portugal, but it's the same, like three and four people constantly just getting circled. And I'm like, at what point does somebody go, nah, that's bullshit. Yeah. But it doesn't happen. It's just forwarded many times. And then you get pictures that's forwarded many times containing a conversation that's also forwarded many times. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why does this, why does this get traction? Like, And it's, oh, I love it. Everyone's apparently this is fact. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently this is fact. <laughs> heard what a sentence! Good, heard, from a, heard from a good source, but I can't name them. <laughs> 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 the best stories. Hey, well they forwarded it to me. Uh, well, that's how I put the bed anyway. Uh, I actually didn't. I don't clue what it I was. I wish had been a good story. Because uh, then you would have been. Like, ah, you could have. You see the amount of people that wrote in. Um, so many people. We, we put up an anonymous thing. Got some crazy shit asked, and it wasn't even directed at you. Like it was just crazy stuff. I was like, I'm not even asking half this stuff. But there was like three people wrote, "What happened in Portugal?" One person didn't even spell Portugal right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. They they spelt it Portugal. Uh, Portugal, I Portugal, I really. And then person. someone asked, "What happened in Spain?" Oh, um, <laughs> so yeah. what the fuck? Like, what kind of people are listening? Um, here's another one. Here's another one. Um, so, uh, oh. <laughs> Does he remember the Yu-Gi-Oh tournament he had for his birthday when we were in primary school? It was sick. Yes. <laughs> Who's that? J- James, James, James McKegney. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, James McKegney, Niall Quinn, Brian McKenna. Amazing. Yeah. He must have fond memories about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, back, hey, back then, um, had the Game Boy Color and you had the link, oh, link cable between the yeah, two like, and you were transferring shit back and forth. Oh, I, was that Yu-Gi-Oh cards or was that... On, uh, I had games. the cards, and then there was actually a PlayStation One game. Was yeah. there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I played that. There was a PlayStation was One game. Yeah, that was a very, very good game. Brilliant game. Yeah. Um, that's what you used to play during the tournament. Was it? What was it? Like was yeah. it? Cards? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your own deck, I remember, like. Oh, it was for um, your. It was for I your think birthday. actually James was one of the first sort of in the year to have the. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. James. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? Wearing it a pee. <laughs> Fucker probably remembers it because he probably won. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the team? <laughs> I know. I beat That's you. That's probably why you mentioned it. Brent Rogers playing football on TV. Haven't spoke since. Shout at Yu-Gi-Oh though. There'll be, there be boys in bars like, oh, I played against Brent Rogers, James McKegney. I sure fucking beat him at Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I should have a thing or two. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's another one. Um, what what sport would you have loved to play on professionally? Badminton. Badminton, yeah, like really? Yeah. You enjoy badminton? Yeah, so like, my dad played it when he was when he was younger and like would have done like local tournaments and stuff. Just yeah. done a pile of sports, but just tried them all and whatever. And we had a net and all at home when the guys were big enough and we'd played a lot. And then it was on at like Sandhill Summer Schemes. Just love playing it, like. And Aye. But you're looking at it now, thinking that seeing the people at the Olympics and like insane the reflexes are ridiculous. Oh, but yeah, it's not a thing here, but I would love to have played it. I think I would have been. I think I would have been good at it, like, but yeah. it's because it was playing it so young, and you think because you're doing it younger, it's easier to pick up mm-hmm. as you go. But yeah, I would love to have played that. You I actually can... think there's a club in Corian. Is there? Yeah, a fella I played Jay Harden with, uh, King Yale. He t- didn't come to Jay Harden gym one day because he had a badminton turn on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and people were just like, "The hell is he doing?" But I was kind of like, 
Fair enough. That's pretty cool. Wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mean to go with that myself. <laughs> Brendan Rogers wasn't seen the next time. Hello. <laughs> he was sick. He was it's absolutely <laughs> pissing down here with this wet, heavy ball coming at me, and he's on stage just uh, flicking a bag and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the real winner here? <laughs> Squash well, would have been another one, I think. Yeah. Been well good. It's hard. Yeah, it gets very, very hot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of like crashing against the wall too. <laughs> so, you know you're supposed to stop before you get I know, the wall. I know, I know, I know. Oh, like sure <laughs> it's not like a wedding when you slide on your knees. <laughs> Planning for the wall just for a break. I was I was like going for the wall and then just time, talking. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's when you know you're shade at it too. When some yeah. boys still at you running, uh, running from outside yeah. they say They look like Roger Federer. I know they're fucking making you go, and you're <laughs> fucking you get wrecking one yourself. lethal shot uh-huh. throughout the whole hour. Like, good, very good, good, good sport. Uh, I slacked the and Derry could have been missing a boy there. Like, they wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't have known it. Could have been fucking Korean. Uh, <laughs> origin story, uh, Brandon. We do an origin story. Um, so just basically about your life. Um, first memory, a tough one, but have you a memory in mind? One of your first memories back in the day of literally, uh, literally. literally. first Anything. memory, first oh, memory. Jesus, told you this was an easy podcast. Fucking hell, things that you can or can't say. <laughs> 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 well, uh, we'll keep a PG. Well, like it's yeah. funny, we were talking about um, at the house all day just about the way kids are now and you can't do anything like child protection this or you, you can't do that or even things like you know kids don't get clipped by their parents anymore if they yeah, do something yeah. wrong so you know so how you we'd have played swatter and <laughs> like under 12s and stuff and thomas casty had like a low loader lorry yeah. and you all jumped in we were all in the back was over the swatter there was you're looking at like 16 kids sitting in the back of an open top lorry yeah. and De- delivering, delivering kids hold on and have your bag in your hand like, yeah. can you imagine how terrifying that was for swatter I know <laughs> <laughs> Them okay. getting the blue rope out, like, or the blue rope. Oh, you taking the gate off the back of her, and them all just come out. Uh, but like, whoa, but now you put four kids in the back with three seats. Uh, that uh, there's not a booster seat. Not, uh, like, uh, it's crazy. Um, right, sorry. Back to your memory. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we we used to, God, I, there'd have been a babysitter and stuff. Like, um, obviously when you're younger and all, and, uh, we could have just we have been playing outside and just took a noose someday. I will climb that tree or. Yeah, no supervision. Yeah, make your own hut. No supervision. Yeah. We'd have walked eight, nine, ten fields away. Never said you're away. Nobody ever saying I'm Ooh. keeping an eye on you mm-hmm. or there's no phone to say ring me when you're back. Mm-hmm. So there could have been what five, six of us been looked after. We've just left the babysitters. <laughs> well, we don't know what time it is. It's not as if we think oh, our mask coming back in five minutes. She could have been looking out going. Where the fuck are these wains at? <laughs> and I'm thinking, Jesus, we couldn't have been any more than four, five, six. I'm looking at my nieces and stuff, and I go, You would never. Ah, chance. You would never you, let them. Would you just be going outside without anybody going out watching you? Never mind. Yep. Other, they're away up the, the road there. Uh-huh. God knows when they'll be back. <laughs> and you came back and there was no there's nothing of it I know it's chastised or nothing I, like, it's crazy that's mental you're like what the hell is, times have changed like mm. yeah. Um, but yeah when you think back on it you were claiming trees that are significantly big like yeah and you're looking at it now going we used to hang off that yeah. swing off it didn't care that it was maybe 40 foot up no branch breaks you're fucked yeah, yeah, totally. Out for <laughs> <laughs> Never making the cut. Yeah. Wonder why you're walking around this lump the rest yeah. of your life. Never mind that, like being in the top of the tree with like a hammer and nail fucking trying to make yeah. a wee hut or something. Like, oh, know. yeah, and it's how you were getting up there carrying all the time. Ah, yeah. Just buying nails and scraping the leg. Yeah. And, like the stuff you got away with. It's class, though. Oh, class. It was. It's the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like some of the, some of the like, trees we'd have been at. Um, during COVID now you had a bit more spare time we just thought we'll walk these routes again mm-hmm. to see if they're still the same or are they overgrown or what's, what's changed and obviously not a wild pilot change but do you know like uh, 
wall ties you use for like building houses to keep your separation yeah. your cavity we had to use them to like swing around there was a few of them still in the tree oh, oh, that's cool. so like they're open at more or less to some degree but you can still see them stuck in it and you're like Aye. that's unbelievable them things are sitting there 20 years like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah are you at hometown Mahara you're Mahara basically. yeah are you a tiny or literally I'm just outside the there's a 30 and then there's a 40 and I'm just outside it so just enough like to not be called a tiny yeah oh I'm literally you, you could have lost that 45 game oh no I'm, I'm very close to being over the age but like I'd be closer to Glenn's clubhouse than most of Glenn players aye yeah so that's where like oh you should be a Glenn man all this kind of stuff aye. like no but my house would be literally measured it like took a card no it's 50-50 I could have you could have went either way very good siblings many Two brothers, two sisters. So I'm I'm the youngest. Oh, Gold, yeah. Golden balls, they called ah. me. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Very Frankly, good. so sure. <laughs> <laughs> we did that with our oldest. Our oldest was the golden balls, and he was the one that was no, the Aiden. Oh yes, yes. Very yeah. Good. No, Michael made all our mistakes. Uh, Hi guys, you learned from <laughs> the, that. Was me. <laughs> the mistakes. The mistakes went through a lot before it got to me, and I went, maybe just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that did not end well. Oh, I'm glad I had Stephen in front yeah, of me. I tell you that. Fuck's sake. Very good. Uh, primary school, Glenview. Glenview. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense with James and them. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of food, a lot of slang. people go to Turkey, and that's a bigger school now. But mm -hmm. yeah, back then it was either Glen or Glenview, and yeah, it was, it was good. Like, oh, it's hilarious. Even thinking back on that, the people that were in your class, and you're like, where are they at now? And it's crazy, yeah. Oh, God. Without naming names, but some of them are, like, <laughs> doing drugs and all that kind of shit. And the other, the other people are, like, doctors and stuff. And uh, like, How do you get uh, that big of an extreme <laughs> in a small area and there's only 30 of us? That, yeah. was, that was a particularly mad couple of years that age group and, and like, <sighs> the Pats. It's just a mental mixture of people. <laughs> mm. Oh, even the Pats, the turnover teachers, like, good <laughs> crazy. God. Crazy. The, the people that got ousted at a at a critical time, if they got to hang around, God only knows what would have happened. Uh, like there was teachers that got fire stinkers let on them, and yeah, they, were right. they were pleading with pupils to not. Yeah, yeah, he, he just got a yeah. And then he left. Like fire he, stinkers he let on him, and he was touch. pleading with the pupils yep. to not tell anybody. Uh, that's he he what? So, so the pupils let a fire stinkers on him, but he thought it would have been bad teaching in terms of his. Power and control. He so he'd got in trouble. So he was pleading with them. Don't, don't tell anybody. They did that to me. <laughs> oh that's shit! Right, sad, right. Isn't it? it is. Uh, <laughs> that's fucking terrible. <laughs> that's my God, like, he got a, he got a wild touch for <laughs> years and a lot years. Lot of mental years. mental davies there. Yeah, but even you think, like, are you? Oh my God! You think about the teachers that you went through, and you're thinking, no way would you get in now. Yeah. No way. No. But that's what made it good. I was. Uh, <laughs> that's, you needed them. Outliers, yeah. and, like, so, what's the point going to a grammar stream and everybody behaving well? Or you're just a prick. You, you want boys that shouldn't be in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bit of entertainment. <laughs> they're not made for school. And you know they're not made for school. <laughs> and they're doing stuff, and people are kind of just going, "I should, I should be reprimanding him." <laughs> I should. Be. But it's just not worth my hassle, so we'll just let him do his own thing over there, yeah. and we'll just do our thing over here, and like. You just don't get away with that now. You're, yeah. you're so cultured into doing things a certain way. You think you need, you need that wee bit of... I wonder if it's as nuts as it is. No, it's it doesn't nuts. What was St. Pat's Mahara like for you? I was, well, I said boy. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we had boy. Yeah. Fuck. So I, 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 I speak positively. I, I, of I loved it. I, I really did love school. Um, yeah, I would definitely love to do it again and that I had a great experience. I, I never got bullied or any of them things in school so I had no negative you know I've known that side of school they say yeah. oh I hated this but I hated that um, like most things you couldn't be bored with exams and shit you just wanted to go in and get out again but um, no I, I really liked it um, what was your subjects what subjects did you like or is there anything I love PE but I love like challenges and physics Oof. the funny thing about my brain is it's useless at the time I could remember stuff now that I wouldn't wouldn't remember in an exam. Mm. Really? What I studied, 
still in there somewhere. Just didn't come out in that hour. <laughs> just panic. Just, just comes out when you see like an angle or a chemical or something. <laughs> yeah, or something. I'm not joking. So we went to like uh, Malta on a holiday, me and Bridge, and like she's like, oh, I wonder where that mountain's like that. And I went, well, it's like that because of either erosion. You look at the, the yeah, lanes, and I, I mean, just everyone was coming off like that. Wow. And I, was, I just thought. Oh, everybody knows this. We've all done GCSE geography. We've all done... Yeah. No, no. That was, that, was, that was the power of a couple of good teachers. That was probably Mrs. Hughes. She had me yes. human. I had uh, Marie McGuckin, God rest her. Oh, uh, she's she, brilliant, like. She was brilliant, too. Oh, first class. Had her for five yeah. years. She was one of my best teachers, like. Yeah. There was um, a brilliant teacher. There was. Yeah. But even, like... But subjects that I didn't really care much about, like... You still... I still remember shit from it. Her Her Cusick. <laughs> Blockbusters and like oh god we had assistant French teachers a guy was called Rudy Bonaire whatever he called him Mr. Boner <laughs> <laughs> and it was spelled B-O-N-E-R like what <laughs> how did they allow him to work there like, you know it just everything fell perfectly <laughs> still funny that <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, and that's that's what makes it so memorable. But um, geez, I wish I had been able to utilize some of the stuff I knew. Um, yeah. But it's funny what sticks like, and things that you remember teachers by. You're like, oh, he's the person that did that there. But then you do remember some of the stuff they taught you because you thought it was yeah. either funny or stupid. Yeah. And you're like, in a weird way, is that how they teach? Mm. Uh, is that how they get uh, through get, to people? Get it, get it in. That's yeah. funny. Like I, I did the uh, B Tech sport. Um, were you a couple of years younger than me? Or a year you, younger. A year yeah. younger. Yeah. You probably remember me a wee bit then. Yeah. Uh, I remember you, you were fucking big tall lad. But, uh, <laughs> I, we were in a B-Tech, B-tech sport class. It was like a double B-Tech sport. And then like I did a... Fusey. Fusey and yeah. Spiffer. Yeah. Ah, fucking hell, man. Just, oh, Mr. Beatty, my boy. <laughs> like, Two legends. Like. Get back. Get back to work. I did nothing. Like, and I still passed it all like really yeah. well. But they were class. T- Spiffer like would come in and... Uh, he, he literally didn't want to teach. He didn't want to. Like He was a good lad, though. But he came yeah. in, and he literally just... Uh, what happened was... Nathan... Do you remember Nathan Deary? Yeah. Nathan Deary and Daniel McKinless. Yeah. Uh, whenever Spiffer came in, they knew how to set him off. They they, they, they knew how to get him to not do work. teach anything. <laughs> yeah. So whenever he came in, he'd be like, right, pick up your leaflets there, or pick up your booklets, and uh, Daniel or Nathan would say, go on, sir, tell us about Australia. Mind that story about Australia you told us. He goes... Do you want to hear that story? <laughs> <laughs> and then he just go into this fucking 45 minute lethal story. We heard it about five times already. Yeah. He was telling this story and it was lethal. It was so good. But as you say, <laughs> there are ways of teaching like and he yeah. was still teaching us but the stories he had were class. Like he was oh. telling us all the travel he did and like he was professional know, athlete. He was an absolute professional athlete in the era he was in. Um, like his... his and calf muscles, he's the calves young muscles were the size of a globe. Like he's the youngest ever All Star, something like that. I. Is he? He, he was massive. a senior All Ireland All Star. He, he was in school. He had massive. He had massive. One McCurry Cup at third year. Third year. He was in the McCurry. He, was, he third, played third five year. year. Third five, year. Five years in a row. Started. Scored one, two in the final. Third year. There's a picture third of him somewhere. Look, look up, uh, look up his name. He had Google. hair on him. Ah, oh. the hair. <laughs> you know what he looked oh, like? Real <laughs> slick back. <laughs> Do you know who he looks like? Like an American stud in the <laughs> movie. He looked like a quarterback. Mix, he looked like a mix of uh, like Rock and uh, who do you call him? Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. Uh, the the hair, and all. hair down to here, yeah. and just in the air like an antelope, like just like a like an absolute fucking stallion. I was actually watching that man's uh, you know when you go on YouTube and recommend it. Yeah. His clips of him playing out in Australia, he just takes off, and I mean, he's burning boys. You know? oh, that man is electric. I wish I had it now, to be honest. I we should try and find it. <laughs> we'll find it. Should, what what are you doing here? <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for the facts that they get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I control. I'm, I'm the Jamie. I'm the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a bit of both. Ah, Spiffer would be some crack. Would he come on? You don't know. If you got a panel of them boys. A panel of them boys, 100%. Uh, oh, like Liam Keelton, no, all. Yeah. No. <laughs> like them, um, just. How that man was so high school, I love that. <laughs> 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 he turned on me and he'll get expelled and stuff. Oh. But he was. He's the, 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 the uh, senior. Uh, so. But he was impressionable. He was. Oh, he, he, Cre- he, careers he, class. Do you know what I mean? I, had my I think it's because he didn't go on like a teacher in many no, ways. He, he, he made connections. He, he showed you how to be responsible in a different way, and uh, I suppose that. 
That's maybe why you he was in careers always, then. Do you know I always wanted to be in construction instead of being no, a no, teacher? No, 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 I go, oh, that's there, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in the vault. All of his stories were about getting the, the water ready down, down his arse in the summer times working in buildings. Aye, like, that's right. Up, that's right. That. Oh, I, uh, I remember there was a constri- there's something in construction. Yeah. But they, they had to make their quota though. Like They had to get the guys to university. That was a thing. They were pushing everybody to university. Pushing, probably, yeah. Could. Too hard. Yeah. Some too might say hard. pushing too hard. For people. Oh, fucking right, I shouldn't have. It's not to be on end. No university. No, that's you're what I mean. coming out of university thinking you're coming out of school thinking I have to go to uni and stuff. But yeah, like I suppose I'm software world. You do not need to go. No, nah, you can go and do. Same with me. You can leave it fifth year, do an apprenticeship. Yep. And get in somewhere and be in the exact same position, if not sooner than you would be. Uh, better. Learn, probably learn it quicker. Yeah. Oh yeah, and better you're learning position. younger. So yeah. you're, you're doing it right. What did you What did you do after some paths? I went. To Queens and done a degree in geography. What? Why? why? Just thinking I was going to do teaching. You know that mountain oh, thing. Right. That's probably why you know that. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> you actually learn. Uh, but that's the thing. You learn so much. The stuff you learn ever is not what you learn. You know, geography. Yeah. You learn like territorial setups of cultures. Right. In terms, like I done a module on basically Israel and Palestine. Is this you me? Yeah. Okay. And it was all about um, how one area sat and created clusters and advantage points in terms of war and then once they had control they could then start stretching their boundaries mm. and cutting off supplies in certain areas and that's um Israel. well you're you're learning but it changed over time so then one realized that's a better territory to get so rather than spreading out and we pockets he said we'll just go here first yeah and then come back on ourselves and you're thinking it's unbelievably but they're using it called the the politics of geography was the name of the module. I think but they call it geopolitics. But it, it is kind of like it would have been human geography as such. But yeah. even then, why people situate in certain places, whether you consciously or subconsciously think about it, it's all to do with resources and things like that. Yeah. Which that, and it's far more that interested me than fucking carbon dating of that ice. Does sound well so, interesting. So what happened? Did you finish geography? In I did, yeah. And I was the, the idea was like, oh, I couldn't be bored going to do a PGC. Basically, I just said, fuck that. You're jumping through hoops to do what? Mm. Yeah, you know well, how could you, a way I seen it was it's like a capped career. You get so far, you, your wage gets yep. capped. And I said, like, well, why why limit yourself to that? Mm. So it just says, no, I'll go somewhere else. And then I done a master's conversion course um, on software development. Fuck, that's and a big. Squandered my way through that. That was damn hard. It's harder than people think. They say, oh, it's a year. It's a conversion course. You get in there. No, that's intense. It's still mental. Like I've that's heard hard. a few people do that. Well, that's such a difference between geography and then. But there's the whole idea of that course is that people who are developers, traditionally are maths, physics, science people, uh, yeah. and they're logical thinkers and <laughs> that side of things. But what they then lack is Creative. go to a client, speak to a client, figure out what's in their head mm-hmm. in terms of you're hearing logic, but you have to hear their idea instead. So I would have. They sort of pitch, they need more analysts, they need more developers on that side. You can still become a really good developer, just as handy. It's it's pure to your preference, but there's a window there of a gap that they needed filled, and that's what that course is all about. Yeah. And basically, you become like a technical business analyst. You, you know, you, you can start there and either swing one way or the other. Once you get in a job, you find your feet and then work up. Um, but you're looking at, I can take what the client's doing and actually pitch a technical solution to those guys who don't have that relationship and then you find that, that become you become a team lead mm. because you're now the liaison of the two. And yeah, so I'm still sort of sitting on that bridge between the two. Mm-hmm. But I like that area. You like, I like being hands-on, but I like dealing with people. Yeah, yeah we, we yeah. had a guest on um, Stephen. Remember Stephen Orr from Bodega Bagel? Yeah. That's what he was doing. It was a guy we Say had again. on. Stephen Orr from Bodega Bagel. Yeah, that's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? <laughs> but he did something similar to that. Uh, he he kind of enjoyed seeing the workflow. We kind of like f- f- uh, solving the problem. Yeah, so lis- listen to the problem, figure out the solution, and then chat to the team about it. And he didn't have, you know, like 100% of the knowledge of one thing. He had about, you know, 70% of most of it. So yeah. he could actually communicate it and be able to, to talk. Everyone. To yeah. everyone. So it was, it was interesting, guys. And that's, well, even the cool bit is somebody can say something but you know a different solution is what they need, but they don't know it. Yeah. Mm, Love that. Yeah. Love giving them that, and then they're like, shit, didn't realise I needed it. Yeah. And just takes them a different way. Class. It's classic. Very good. See, during uni, were you up in the Holy Lands, I take it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, I. <laughs> my, my last year, I would consider it as the farewell tour. <laughs> so, that master's year, 
grew up boys, played football and all the rest, but we were just like, right, we're committed to this now. Well, we're, it was so that Masters was 9 to 5 every day, whereas oh. geography wasn't as intense or as ways you had like a Wednesday off and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we basically said, we are going to go to every class and we're going to go to the library every day. We're going to go to training every day. And then once training's over, hightail it up the road, we're going out. And we never missed a beat. Oh, we went out Monday hell. to Friday every week. When, when do you sleep? You just kind of fresh as flu all year round. <laughs> <laughs> just constantly sick. But it was lethal <laughs> because you just says, you know what, I'm going to go all this in. Is the last. Johnny Bravo all in. <laughs> class oh it was deadly and you know what because you're you're just doing things differently than you did before and yeah. it's a new it's like it's almost like a totally new uni experience but then you're still going back to the house then boys and fucking about with cars you're still doing what you like doing anyway but there was mm. now another element to the whole thing mm. which is great and then it kind of i had a split then between what was county life and all the sport that was going on and that was like downtime nearly Aye. i was lethal loved it Class. I mean, when you talk about doing uni again, I would do the farewell tour again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> would you? Oh, yeah. Loved it. Even the fucking stress of all we've a project to do as a team project we're doing together. Hadn't a clue what we were doing. Uh-huh. And you just make it work. And then when you get something to work, you're all celebrating. Like, yes, this works. <laughs> and then I'm looking back on it going, oh, my God, as an idiot. That was uh, the easiest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck, was the final year? Yeah, I was like a master's like. What, what was sort of your mindset after the Masters? Like, what's what's next for that? Oh, it was like, um, get a job. Did you walk into a job or was it difficult enough to try and find one? Um, Are you saying that just because he's a dairy player? <laughs> no. Well, you know, I wouldn't have been really a, a, th- a thing then. Like, no. Um, I was sort of, I played about a day hurling, wasn't really popular, right. so to speak. Um, but I applied to Citibank and a guy that uh, was manager, part of the management team back then, Paddy Farn, working city at the time. Oh, Paddy, yeah. Yeah. So, working city at the time, I says, Paddy, do you know of any IT jobs going? He said, yeah, I applied to Citibank and all the rest and basically I got accepted for a job there. But I rung up to say, look, I got accepted. I'm starting in eight months' time. Thanks very much for the reference. Must have done me the word of good, all the rest. He says, I have an office of my own. Sure, call in on your way back from uni someday on a Friday evening or whatever. But didn't know. Obviously, knew Ryan really, really, really well from uni, and um, didn't know he had his own company at the time. Just thought, oh, this must be Paddy's office. So I called in, and they're talking about all oh, what we're doing, setting up their own company, and mm. doing the rest. And he says, "Look, do you, want, do you want to work here instead?" And I says, "You know what? Well, see if you're going to Belfast. Um, same gig, just closer to home. And I suppose they know the whole sporting lifestyle and everything. So I just thought, yeah." I think it's up in that offer and I was there, for, there like, for yeah sure. I was there for about eight years and um yeah I've recently changed like so but it was brilliant like they gave me the opportunity that they they knew I didn't know anything mm. but they were happy to let me learn mm. and happy to let it trial and error and bounce off each other and what can we do and and I suppose the company was doing but ever in that stage we still were trying to find our feet and um it was a brilliant experience like I got to do so many things like oh, we even tried gaming development stuff so you know, you you see all them, yeah, making their you're making their appreciation of all them Yu Gi Oh games. <laughs> <laughs> How difficult it is! Like, oh, that's just dead handy. I'll make that, and you're like, absolutely not. It is so hard. Like, and you're yeah. dealing with like yeah. a dropping ball. You have to be physics and everything. Yeah. Long way. It's it's unbelievable. Like, definitely exciting, probably with start being a part of a startup like that. As yeah, well. and you're you're you just want to learn. You want to yeah. absorb, and then you're trying to find your feet way. How do you speak to clients? I don't know. You're, you know, you're meeting people for the first time. You're, yep. yeah. or you're maybe managing a project you've never done before. Or how does this work? How does that work? Mm-hmm. Um, people are asking you questions you don't know. Um, sometimes you had to let on you did know. And uh, <laughs> better bluffing. <laughs> never you're heard anyone. <laughs> you're, you're <good laughs> That's part of it. Sometimes you have a bit of pressure, a bit of something. But yeah, they yeah. give me they give me a shot. And um, very good. Yeah, it was good. Like that's really that's really met us as well. I yeah. know. Were you always in that? Uh, Tim office then or were you in somewhere else first? No, or? so we were, yeah, we were always in that Tim office. So we started off and we call it the dark room. We had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dark room we knew you were in. Yeah, uh, yeah. In and the then, kitchen. Yeah, and then Ryan got like the, the screened one, the glass oh, front. Yes, and then right. we took the one in the middle as well. So we started to grow a bit and then, um, right. I suppose when you have a team, 
and they're in three different rooms. It's not ideal, so then we moved to Marfelt and just weren't probably Marfelt. similar time. It was it was around similar time yeah, we moved. Maybe it was our first, but it was I mean could have been a couple of months. I think it was. Uh, I, it yeah. I think you were just trying to. He's like, ah, oh, they went. Yeah, they went. Fuck. <laughs> That's good crack. Like, well, like, Ryan's looking at all the real estate, man. <laughs> I uh, well some crack you boys never cleaned the grill like remember <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> Jesus bad job we had bad job we had to put posters so you have to say clean the grill <laughs> that wasn't me that wasn't me we had clients coming in the place smelt like fucking burgers <laughs> <laughs> turkey burgers six o'clock in the morning tur- tur- turkey burgers and fucking rats I just made Virgil coming in with us walking in shorts and he cling full around both his legs I was like what the <laughs> fuck was he doing? Did he get a dead leg and his ice on and melting the end of the bar ticking off and he just came in like leg up on the counter and he's like, I got you tattoos. <laughs> oh, aye, that's right. <laughs> I was getting tattoos was, like every week. <laughs> like your friend or someone was starting to like, that's right. <laughs> yeah, just let him draw me. <laughs> Most traps aren't supposed to be shoot lanes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck, those offices were some crack. Like, it was brilliant. Like, uh, I remember walking into Ryan and just annoying him every day like for maybe five minutes. Like It nearly was a game like, and I don't think he knew how he was playing. I just used to walk in and ask him questions and then walk out again. <laughs> we, like, you nearly lost your hand. That's right. Remember that the drone. Jeez, were you there for that? Absolutely enormous. You were up. Were you upstairs or were you downstairs? It's upstairs, and you come up and you're just like, uh, I think I need a bit of help here, guys. And I was like, <laughs> I just, I just seen the, the 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 constant stream of blood, and I was like, something ain't good here. So, <laughs> so do you know about this, the drone? I, do, I heard about this. It was terrible. Did you? Uh, uh, fuck, I must have travelled far enough. I didn't I so we got a new we got a new drone and it was an absolute tank of a thing. It was they, they were the same drones they were using at Game of Thrones at the time. Yeah, and we didn't obviously didn't know how it fucking worked, but at the same time it lost control <gasps> of itself. Hell. So it was basically ter- uh, the controller it was basically, ter- it was basically Terminator. Like so, it was up in the air and then the controller was like, "Nah, there's no more control over this." So this absolute tank of a thing it was literally with that width, propellers going like this. But we had watched the video a week before. Of this model, like in like Costa Rica, and this and the same drone flying past her for like a real amazing shot, just took the fucking face clean ripped off her, face like off ripped her. the face just Damn. clean off her, skeleton and all. It wasn't inside. It wasn't inside. It was in the, but, car, it was but, in the oh, car park. Car park. But there was we like did. a one. Well, and we tried to, we but <laughs> we did once. We, did. we tried to first, but then we're like, no, we'll take it outside. I took it outside. But there's like a one, the controller lost the, the good, uh, it lost it connection. Just, it was just floating it towards lost, you. It like, lost connection. It thing. And it didn't know, I don't think that drone at that stage knew how to like, like kind of go home. You know, the oh, drones I, I go drones home now. Mm. It wasn't yeah. doing it the way it should have, maybe something like that. I think Ryan was there and it was coming towards us. Don't you blame Ryan. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, me, me and Ryan, I think, I think Ryan was behind me somewhere and there was a pile of cars. Ah, that's right. And what I did is I just reached up to grab it out of the air, but I was doing it so it wouldn't, you know, hurt me, hurt Ryan, yeah. destroy a fucking three Because it like cars. these handles underneath it or something? No, so no, I, went no, up, no. I went up and grabbed it from the battery. From oh, like, yeah. I think it was like there was an area, no, it was below. I think yep. it was below. I had to grab it first, like that. So when I grabbed it like that, the propeller cut through my um, knuckle. knuckle. Yeah. And then the other bit cut through the bottom the of my, my thumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, so I grabbed it here and it started cutting me. And at the same time, I took the battery and ripped the battery out of it. So yeah. basically stopped Judgment Day, like, but... <laughs> That was I'd, have, I'd have been sitting up in that wee room next thing you know this drone comes up <laughs> trying to kill us all trying to get home cutting shit hello Brendan <laughs> John's dead I don't think um, I went down to, for that I didn't see that but I seen, off, I seen no, the no. aftermath you literally had like a full roll of toilet roll just jammed against it and I was like I remember getting really cold uh, and started shaking like out there oh, it was horrible yeah. do you remember the other <laughs> dramatic day do you remember your man came back to the, the office and it wasn't his office anymore Yes. Do you remember that? that yeah. was you haven't heard this story. Where do you where do you oh, hear why? This? So oh, he was fucking livid. Uh, <laughs> I know one more I know another story about him now, a layer to this story. What do you hear? Brilliant. Are we um, allowed to talk about this, yeah? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> show what cares? Show, show, show what do we know anyway? <laughs> so, I thought I was gonna rip my face off. Like. Uh, uh, so what do you, I want to hear and I found out why he was gonna rip my face off. So um, for Jude's sake and the audience, took his fucking drone. That's why. Um, 
That was his car. So we, we moved into a new space within um, the business park, and it was a bigger space, and it had desks, and, and we rang up the landlord or the tenant or whatever, and we were like, just like, oh, we're taking over the space. There's desks here. Can we have them? Paid for all these desks, <clears throat> cleared the place out. They're like, look, the, t- the old tenant's not coming back. No worries. We were in it, um, I'd say, maybe th- three or four days. Not, not that long. Not that long. But you didn't horse ever now. It was still... Mm. You know, you still just, all there. You, you tucked his stuff away. Took all the stuff out, put it in black bags, and put That's it right in the hall, and just yeah. left it there. And we had no real like, we weren't going to throw it out anytime soon. It was like we don't know when these guys are coming back. We know nothing about them. Can't get a contact for them. Blah blah blah. So what it was used for was kind of like a hot desk in place for a company. So say they're based in Belfast and maybe based in Derry. Yeah. The company would use that t- that tomb office as a, like a hot desk place where yeah. they could go and make calls and stuff. And it was quite a big room. And me, Fergal, me and Fergal in the room, um, you were there at the time as well. so, I. Uh, so this guy just walks in, like, with a backpack on, you know, as if he's coming into work. <laughs> and I'm sitting at his desk. I'm sitting at his desk. I literally just took, o- I literally, it looks like I took, his, took his job. Took I his, just thought, yeah, a guy meeting them guys in there, that's took, all right, took, took his company, and he just walks in. He goes, what are you doing? I goes, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is my... This is my desk. I bought these. This is, this is our office now. He's like, no, it's not. I was not as. He's like, where's all my stuff? I sit there in black bags. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't being cheeky though. No, I wasn't, wasn't being cheeky. It was I was factual. I was. It wasn't like I was throwing them out. I was like, I was out there in black bags, and then I and then he was out there, this. and I started getting fucking real panic. Not panic attack, but anxiety at this. Mm. And he was like, he was like the whole looking through the black bags. Raging. Like, oh, I need to ring someone here. I need to ring someone. You were there. Oh, I yeah. remember you. Oh, I out. came in and gave me the full bars about what just happened, and I was like. I heard it. I was listening intently. <laughs> <laughs> I had the fucking glass <laughs> to the door. And then me, me and him, I was cleaning the grill. <laughs> so me, me, me and him were having a shouting match out in the middle, the middle of the area in the in the office, um, and it's basically like you know, what the fuck do you want from me? You know, because I was given this space. The our business it's got nothing to do with. We've so. already paid like first month's rent. Yous aren't here anymore. Yous are gone. And he couldn't fathom this. Like, he wasn't told. How, like, he wasn't. Yeah. He obviously wasn't told. So that was okay. And we never seen him again after that. But me and him were shouting at each other. And he was about to row. And Brendan was sort of in the background, I guess. Just fucking like. I was like, I, I was like Brendan, you better be in my fucking side. We're after in here. I'm ready to rock. Left anyway. Left anyway. Keep it a fair um, fight, guys. And uh, I'll, never, I'll never forget that. The, 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 boy, the part I'll never forget is just him, me and him, like locking eyes, like from him coming in the door and me at his desk. <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forget that as long as I live. We thought we had a new client. <laughs> so I was like, good on this guy. Every day in the morning for this one, good on this. <laughs> Brendan was like, John, I'll be with you now. <laughs> but uh, I, I was... You in my office. <laughs> I was, if, you was, been, if you hadn't been dead on about it, but, you probably could have left us up there for the day. But wait to hear this. Aye. Wait to hear this. So this was about uh, a few years later, actually. I found out what happened. So your man that was working for that company was an absolute cokehead. And he was forgetting. He was basically forgetting stuff. Like he wasn't going to work. He was showing up randomly in the offices at the at the co-working places, and he wasn't going to work. And he was pretending he was going to work, but he was just coked out of his mind all the time. And he couldn't. And he couldn't remember. Like he wasn't phoning anybody. He wasn't communicating with his head office. Just bluffing all the time. That's why he didn't hear about the office being taken over. Because he was just on, a- to be fair. he was just on abs- he was just absolute binges. He was on binges of drugs, like, and and they didn't know where he was. They didn't know where he was. He didn't know where they were. He didn't know where his office he was. Didn't he was. didn't know what was going on. So I heard this a few years ago because I, I I was at a party one night and they they, they heard about it up in Korean. And he was there. So it was fr- it was, no 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 it was, it was no. But they fucking took a photo with me and sent it to him. Do you, do you remember this lad? Do you mind he stole your office? Absolutely not. But I didn't bring it up at this party. The fella, one of the guys came over to me and he goes, uh, oh, I heard, about, I heard about you still in your boy's office. I goes, what? He goes, I, he's a mate of ours. He's from the North Coast here. I goes, fuck off. And then he told me the story about him just being, him just bluffing work and just being a cokehead. Like. To be fair, he was like a man. He couldn't settle. Uh, uh, he was up and down the stairs, flat out. And I was thinking, God, he must have no full tingle on there. He's, oh, he was just jumping down calls all the time. But 
You just think some boys are. But know, how mental? Huh? Mm. But how mental is that? I I I found out the the still end of that story. Like it's not nuts. I thought there was going to be another contrary story of oh he beat the head of you and <laughs> threw you back into where you belong and you're all laughing. <laughs> Uh, very good. Very good. Where, though, where were we at there? Oh, I, I Mac. So I Mac, you're right. I Mac for a few years went on to Marf. Oh, that's a story too. Ma- Marfelt was I Mac. Yes. So Ryan's oh. uncle's I Mac facilities management. That's right. We yeah. were I Mac AT. That's right. Try to release apps for people. Yes. On the Google Play and the Apple Store. Turns out when you're trying to release apps as I Mac AT, it's a wee bit conflicting to the Apple oh. products. <laughs> it would be. Would be. <laughs> they thought we were trying to steal their shit and I was thinking, look, we would not be making low-key apps like this if we were trying to leverage off your name. Right. But, of course, the legal letters came and says, you know what, we've kind of found what we're looking for now. We're doing a certain mo- uh, type of thing now in terms yeah. of software, so we changed the BPM building. Um, yeah, business process management, that kind of stuff. So, so it's better now. Probably. So it's like, oh God, that was a that was another world. But it's like everyone, you have accounts set up on email that you have to re, have to do everyone all over again. Uh, like, oh Jesus, forwarding there. emails, emailing off two accounts until everybody's transitioned and mm-hmm. uh, spontaneous. Like, that's, that's the, the iMac AD started around the same time that I, the first iMac. Came yeah, out. I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah. that original. So, 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 how, how would you have known? How the hell would you know? Like, yeah. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, well, very good. And then on to your iMac for a few years, four or five years, maybe more. Uh, about eight. Eight years. Yeah. Holy fuck. I oh, yeah, have seen some shit. In eight years. <laughs> <haven't I? laughs> or they seen some shit. From me. Some crack. <laughs> oh, uh, it's really good. Like, yeah. I suppose when you're when you're friends, the boys you work with, it's uh, stuff crack. Yeah. Um, very good. And yeah. then you moved on to what was it? Concara. Is that where you're at now? Yeah. Okay. Well, what are you doing there? Uh. But of the same, really, digital transformation stuff, but it's all about business processing, so safety management, learning management systems, um, document control, all kind of stuff. But we try and do a lot of newer things like um, AI, uh, but of smart intelligence stuff, mm-hmm. try and get the use of chatbots, chat TPTs, how you would build them. How you implement them, how they differ for different companies, that's a whole world in itself. People think ChatGPT is only one, but there's things that are built specifically for doing videos, doing yeah, imagery, yeah, yeah. doing document reading, like OCR, like reading documents, yeah. pulling out stuff they need, filling out information for them, all that. Like, Unreal. This shit, like people upload invoices and somebody just spends their day keying that shit back and something else. And like, so upload it, let it read it, does it for you. Jobs, mm. Job's done. That's the kind of stuff, and you're like, God, there's so much cool stuff, and yeah, we're, it's like I'm still developing in many ways. I'm still making clients. I'm doing what I did for for Ryan, all, and you know, it's just it's like a different thread of it's a different angle yeah, they're coming nice. at from a business perspective. So it's not the same stuff. It's it's the same but different, and you just get to use different technologies in, and yeah, I suppose it's <laughs> literally around the corner from where I live. So it's, like, <laughs> it's close, but yeah, that's very good. That's and nice they- change, like. Very good. That used to be the offices. The offices um, used to be a graphic designer. What do you call him? He does that. Rinkies. Uh, aye. Yeah. Meal, yeah. meal. Or aye. The, 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 victory he, he did Victory Champ. Victory yeah. Champ. Yeah. It used oh, yeah. to be his show. Oh, is that where you're at in Mahara? Yeah. Just above the old bank? Yeah. yeah. Ah, very good. So one of our offices is actually the vault. So oh, holy we, shit. There's like a bit of a boardroom we have, you know. Ah, cool. But that is the old vault. Wild hard to get signal off. Uh, <laughs> on our way. So when you're in there for a meeting, you're in there for a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> There's, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're paying attention yeah. for sure. Let's, let's talk. Because that's, that's all we can do. Lock the vault. <laughs> Lock the vault. Lock the client in. That's a good way. Good way. One way of getting an invoice paid, isn't it? <laughs> sort of hope there's a wee hole in the corner and you walk in the big bag of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, cash out. Have you ever been Crawford's across the way with the vaults of the gun room now? Oh, why? Yes. There's, there's just no money in that. <laughs> Northern Bank got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of fifty-five notes still in circulation. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wasn't a stitch left in that one. Over. <laughs> that didn't have my rod, did it? It did, yeah. Was there a Northern Bank house in Mahara? Yeah. Was that where that... I, That's where the Northern Bank robbery no was. Mahara. I don't know why I didn't know that. Yeah. Class. I just remember, like, 
UTV News, what do you call your boy? And now on the UTV, uh, what do you call Julian. him? Julian Simmons, Julian. yeah. And they were just going over the the news, and I was like, I was like, fucking hell, that looks Bada baller very, and very familiar. <laughs> then you start looking at, you know, maybe only seven or so at the time, you're looking at it going, Aye. is that, is that the time? <laughs> <laughs> is there a big hole in the bank? <laughs> and then you're just like, God, you know, it's funny. There's a lot of police playing yeah. about this last one. Was that a heist heist as in Ocean's Eleven? Or was that when... The one he was never caught? But No, but was that when a tractor came in and stole the, th- the thing? Or was that a... No, 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 no. You're thinking I. Yeah. Oh, this was, there was no, as in... There was no tractors involved. No, no. Right, right, this right, was right. Balaclava's guns. Guns. And robbed, 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 give me your robbed money. the whole show under the back of a van with no number plate on it. Got out. Never recovered. It's Not a penny. A Hollywood movie ready to be. It is. Oh, yeah. But up then the, up a glen, she. Yeah, <laughs> we make it. <laughs> Shit, too. some crack. We didn't even know where it was fucking at. No, I didn't know where it was. <laughs> that sounds lethal. Yeah, you skip for James Cagney. Oceans of <laughs> Have you listened to his podcast yet? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm, oh, Aaron's hilarious too. Though. <laughs> it's wild, funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's lethal. Like, like, it, uh, the fair like it's like them when they're teenagers. It's nothing's changed. Oh, Not a thing's changed. On. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, I, yeah. I, uh, Brilliant. Brilliant. Even, like, Aaron runs a bar. I know. That's right. <laughs> I, I only learned that recently. The wrist. Yes. Yeah, so much, like, you're thinking, how do you be so, like, laid back, so much crack, and then, like, you're the guy telling people what to do. Uh, he's just sitting in the bar all day, like, having yeah. crack, like. We're actually going to do a podcast next year there. In the bar. In the bar. Do it, do it. I'm off for Just that. Just a wee round of bacon fries. This is the white funny part of Corey. Like, uh, so these boys started trying to sell and marketing plans. Oh, you could do this with bar. And Art was like, you don't, you don't understand what they bar this is. <laughs> <laughs> the, people come, the people come drinking this bar are going to come drinking this bar. <laughs> 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 I'm making my money. It could be to put that on Facebook. <laughs> In fact, you putting shit up there, ah. it's going to stop them guys. <laughs> 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 Shout out to the roost. Love Shout out. Yeah. Sponsor us. Lovely, lovely old spot for sure. Oh, uh, very good. Um, I don't have any question here. Right, I've got a wee quote actually for you. Um, oh, here. I was going to ask you about Irish dancing. What are you laughing at? I, just, I thought you were going to give him one of your whimsical quotes there. <laughs> I'd never do that. <laughs> Irish dancing. Um, I mentioned it at the very start. Well, what happened there? Like, when did that start? And uh, Say the mere flatly. <laughs> you were flat like, and you chose Gaelic. Like, you chose the Gaelic. Like. I you know, like I started there since when I was five, maybe. Uh, um, just my sisters were going, my brothers were going. Um, they obviously stopped very, very soon after starting. But I went, learned it, went a couple of faces. One thought, "This is great. I'm getting trophies here." You started doing it more often. You're still winning. Uh, won my first All Ireland when I was eight. Um, just. You know, when you just suppose when you're one of them things, then it got to the stage where my man didn't push me to go to faces every week. Mm. I was playing games every week, mm. weekend, so it was just a case of all Ireland's Ulsters, the world's whatever was on. They're only two or three times in the year. You practice your steps, you go compete, tear See, on. Happens. But then it was like, to me, then that was like breaks in my GA calendar. It's like we money holidays, you got to go away. Don't get me wrong, you're a young teenager, there's. There's a fair amount of boys my age group, but fair amount of boys was 12, 13. Mm. A few of them um, didn't turn out to be the same uh, desires in terms of relationships. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, what a the, diplomatic way the, to say that. <laughs> so I'm confused. <laughs> John, they, there, him, her. <laughs> doesn't understand. <laughs> but basically... Uh, <laughs> the numbers are probably in your favour. You just you're you're meeting girls, all the rest. You're a young fella. You're thinking class, and I suppose there's a bit of a success came along with really good school. There was a lot of boys in our school that we we went practice for teams. Did no practicing. Didn't wear dancing shoes. Didn't do nothing. Our dancing teacher was just glad to have us. Yeah. Glad yeah. to have the boys because boys are rarity. Yeah. yeah, we had a we had thirty senior men. So mm. we don't have dance the first and only time ever where you had. 30 guys doing a freestyle so freestyle you can do whatever music you want yeah it has to be a theme and you go on you dance you have to do so much air dancing you can have props but you just can't touch the ground you can you know you're not leaving them lying about the place things like that um you know, you're using them to act out by air dancing you're still mm-hmm. doing your threes or your travels or whatever and 
we done things like the Rugby World Cups. We were all kitted rugby things. We were doing line outs and That's cool. stomping to the scrums yeah. and, and all, you know, Lethal. making a proper, and it wasn't to like make a flatly music. We were doing national anthems and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Everything that was sort of rugby related. We done one on Greece. We done one on mm-hmm. traditional Irish dances. That was one of them as well, but they all come with names. So it's like the three sea captains, the drunken gauger. So you were dressing up as that character. Mm dancing to the dance so anyone that's in Irish dancing appreciated that we mixed all the set dances together because they're all different speeds different timings mm-hmm. but we managed to make it work that's credit uh, Liam Bradley from Bioga oh yes he was from our dancing school he mixed all the music phenomenal nice. at it like wow. just was really the music itself wow. you could listen to it on its own but then the routine obviously helped we done one on like Irish legends Celtic legends we call it um, so you have all like the Daniel O'Donnells and the Westlice and, wow. and the uh, like the Dubliners we took Class. highlights of their songs put them together yeah. and you're dancing out the meanings of the songs yeah, yeah. things like that and so yeah we won a few worlds and things like that with that but see it dancing class did we fuck practice no way <laughs> there was a football out and you're spraying past the kids hall money glasses hall on a Saturday girls had to practice I don't know what it was the boys got to do whatever they wanted uh, so the girls were dancing away and a ball would go over their head and boys would be catching it and they had to dance away and <laughs> not flinch yeah, so it, it was nearly like lit that's what kept us about we had so much fun doing it so uh, I'd say I finished when I was 22 23 you kept that up till you were yeah. still playing like me and Kath McGuckin would have done like wedding gigs together like you know they magicians come along ah, now yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. so Irish we we were that fun. we took whatever was in the charts mixed it ourselves off some downloading shit off limeware and uh, trying to make it work uh, together yeah, and, yeah. and we would have made a routine for 8, 10, 15 months whatever whatever duration they wanted mm-hmm. and it was always the latest hit so people were kind of like oh, holy shit this is this is different because um, nobody wants to go and see Michael Flatley again you could just put a video of that you do something uh, different like uh, uh, Something catchy, something different, and yeah, yeah. yeah so we'd have done that like every Wednesday, Saturday night for just. Well, it wasn't even making us any money. We just it's good crack. Save a bit of coin, like yeah. And it was always families you knew and things like that. So you're always going yeah. for entertainment. But Were you ever involved in any of those big viral ones? Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, was it a bit, friend? Carlos Williams got married. Oh yes, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, that was, a big one. yeah it was a big one, and um, then. Two week, two weeks later, I done at my brother's wedding, so just one fed into the next. And ah, very good. Was asked to do like a couple of um, TV shows where like a jig gig and things like that. I was asked to do local trips yeah. that did tour Asia for eight weeks and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And they're like, there's a massive opportunity. It's a full time job. You get really good money out of it. And I goes, I, I mean, I was turning them down the first phone call. They're like, well, what, what do you mean? And they wrote me back again later. And like, you sure? Like, is that a snap decision? And I goes, look, I have. No issue with you doing what you do, but I'm gonna play football hurl. <laughs> that's okay, that's the long sort of. I'm, they probably don't have many people turning that down. Like that's probably. Th- that's the thing, yeah. But, but I mean, there's one other guy who played GA, Anthony Hargan from Ardmore, brilliant fella. We're the only two to play football. Yeah. See the other top two and three guys that we were competing against: River Dance, Lord of the Order Dance, Lord of the Dance. No way. Proper, proper. Proper good dancers like rubber dance top standard. Okay, no. They were lethal. When fuck one of them, one of them was on before me. One of them was on after me. All was to do with like alphabetical name, and everybody's name gets a number, but it's it doesn't matter about the number. It's alphabetical, <laughs> and they just it's whatever who yeah. comes out first. But um, Callum Kelly from Scotland was one, and has like you talk about somebody hang time. He could jump and just seem like he's there for fucking ever <laughs> and he's doing shit in the air and I'm going I need two three jumps at this <laughs> to do what he's doing and like individually and he was just like up bang 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 clicking and stuff and you're kind of going wow it, it's when you're on stage as a boy everyone's done on your own with girls there's that many they do two and three on stage at the same time so a guy it's you have a full stage on your own thousand people in a hall but it's not like the hall's dimmed down the lights are on the stage yes but the lights in the hall are on you so you see, see everyone everybody but everybody there w- is listening intently. The stage is mic'd. Right, so guy. they can hear every beat you make, mm. every click you miss. You go out of time, man. If you miss anything, say you miss a click, somebody go, Everyone. the crowd will go, and you can hear, you can hear it. it. Oh, oh, you can, you can, oh, you can hear it. So everyone is, but see when he was on before me and I'm sitting watching, like all the boys are fucking practicing the way back right now, I'm standing there with my hands behind, just thinking, 
I ain't wasting any fucking energy before I go out there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it out there. Not, not backstage. Um, but he, he would have done stuff like eight and nine times with a team that only lasts a minute and 30 seconds or so. And everybody's going, oh. And I was sitting there going, fucking hell, I'm bastard's good. And then, and then I have to go on afterwards and I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, it's going to be very hard to wallow these folks after that. And then the guy that comes on after something similar blowing the thing away and you're just like, See if I get in the fucking the podium here, it's like yeah, it goes first to fifth, and that's the podium, and everybody mm. gets a trophy first to fifth. That's kind of what you're looking for because it's highly competitive. And I was always in the top five when it comes to the world and stuff. Um, I won Ulster, but there's always top three. Like you're talking about two, three points separating. Mm. It's not much, wow. and again, it's opinion. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah, preference, it's, yeah. and that's why people go to faces. So the people see you more often, maybe get to know you, get to talk to you. That's my friend. I, uh, mm. So I was the guy who didn't wear the flurry stuff and didn't go to faces. I was known as that guy. So that's why I was like, ah, I've got a name for this. That <laughs> <laughs> means I don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang in here. I'm going to make this last. Fucking hell. Well, I'm like, how, yeah. how did you fit it all in? That's yeah. like insane. So I had to walk. I had to on like McCroy train. So... I talk about Halloween, Easter, the two big times for dancing. I had went to school, done my McCrory training, McGeehan, Harlan, O'Keefe, whatever. As soon as that's over around five o'clock, so I walked to Glen Club, met Cahill McGuck in there. We practiced from there to I had Slant Hill training at seven, half seven. I got picked up from Glen Club, went to Slant Hill training, trained, come home from training, say half nine, whatever. That's oh. when I had my dinner, started my homework, studying, everything. That was me for about eight, ten years. What, them bad 10, 11? Oh, 12, 1. As Sean Marty Locker just to say, burn the midnight oil. That's <laughs> no, just that. 12, 12, 1 then, up again at what, 7, 8? Oh, half 8, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> half, half 8, I'm, I'm close. You're in for 9 now. Yeah, I'm in for 9, it's enough, like, but... That is, that is intense for... It's not a schedule people be, like, aware of. It's, it was intense and stuff, but... You just learn to make it fun. You learn to make it enjoyable. That's where you want to go. That's yeah. you, if you cheese your Santa, you'd never do it. No, never. But well, nah, bit of a niche. <laughs> That's fucking mental. That is insane. Oh, you had the legs anyway. <laughs> I do you think? Do you think that, that uh, helped with the GA, the, the the dancing at all? Do you think? Probably a bit. Yeah. Um, I would never be footwork and all them things is one thing, but your build, ability to land and stay in your feet is one thing. Like I could jump, spin land one leg I have no issues with I don't think oh fuck I have to put my foot here I'm just you're there I'm just uh, landing I'm yeah. not thinking about it anymore it's just Same. you do that many spins and jumps and whatever and you're landing one foot the other and bouncing probably injury prevention probably helped a lot uh, well with. fuck you're saying that now you're thinking no <laughs> 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 probably in a way you're, you've developed some level of tolerance like, but yeah. I was actually told that I had a wake there recently um, that a friend got a phone call this is one I asked you a question what the fella here he's very important, but he wants to ask you a question about a fella, you know. He's like, right, you know, so all sounds very sketchy. Uh, it's just kind of like fucking bringing up old history here. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, a fella from Kilkenny wants to know um, what age Brendan Rogers on dancing to. He's kind of like, that's a random old question. Like, no precursor to this conversation. No, oh, I spoke to him. Yeah. Oh, we could go. The guy hadn't rung him in years. And it was Brian Cody wanted to know. Was he actually an Irish dancer? Did he actually do it? So Brian Cody then took the phone out the and says, I want to know because that man seldom doesn't find his feet when he goes up for a ball. And he says, ah. he says, there's a lot of Kilkenny players that don't Irish dancing, won't admit it or won't ever come out public about it, but he says, those are my best people at London when competing for high balls. Wow. So I put them in certain positions. Ah. Wow. That's, that's funny that, like, ah. that he, that's even his thought process of certain players will give you cert something. Was, uh, yeah, you can put them in Based certain positions. Based on that position. alone. Yeah. Lethal. It's cool, isn't it? That's very good, Brendan. We're going to wrap it up before Fergal keeps asking you 20 questions. Is this still the quick fire round? Fergal's not talking. Fucking see how Fergal talk there. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. Stop me asking good questions. Where were these There's a new sheriff in town. Do you know there was a question earlier here asked, and I literally had it right in front of me. I was like, you fucker, Fergal. Oh, I already asked it. No, you asked it right like a second before me. Nah, jokes, convenient, jokes. convenient. Jokes. No, it, it just it fascinates me the work ethic that you have and the fucking the sheer I don't give a fuckness about like the Irish dancing thing. There's 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 something behind it that people like you oh, probably yeah. got the shit taken out of you for probably from some people. Like it was a thing 
do you remember in first year we done an American? It's a picture of me and he. Uh, like, that. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm talking about. So yeah. it's like an American history thing. <laughs> Uh, and first year in some parts uh-huh. part of it's to do we like dress up and get to know each other and all the rest but it was one of them things where all oh, he does Irish dance and all the rest whatever so Irish immigrants going over to America this was showing the Americans their culture mm. that was the angle to get the Irish dancers and there was two or three of us as Irish dancers I was the only boy people were kind of like oh you Irish dancing before I went on stage but it didn't bother me I was just like I'm good at it so fucking what else? I'm, I'm one of this. Where do you see this? He's <laughs> the real loser. I'm doing very well. And see, say whatever you like, doesn't bother me. I've got a medal in my back pocket. But then I went and danced in front of the school year, which is a big thing to do as a first year kid. Like, uh, you don't really know everybody. Yeah. And they were all like, holy fuck. And I got a stand ovation, basically. <laughs> and I went off, and other girls went on and danced and done a wee bit and came off, and all you hear is, Brandon. <laughs> and that went on. To, and I had to go, the teacher had to come and go, all joking aside, could you go back out and do something else? And I says, yeah, stick on that track. Whatever they were dancing to, I, I'll do something else. Because I was used to doing weddings and stuff, even at that age. Uh, I just stick that on. I, yeah. I have something else I'll do here. I go out again. So I went out again, and people just went, fair fucks. Never, never questioned again. The last time I danced in school was with Kath McGuckin, prize given before I left. He says, you can have the full day off school. Prize given's at one. You know, the, the, the one we give out, like the people who've, done all the attendance that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. and there's a few awards but they basically cleared the stage after it was all over and me and Cal danced again their own routine own music they give us the full day of school as long as we're in for that time do the dance as far as we're concerned you're there and there's fucking teachers and everyone at it and we dance and the, you could hear a pin drop like I remember me and Cal masking one beat together because you know the stage is all uneven it's all good mm. so we just whatever way it was we went off the same age of a verge of the wood but we both missed the same beat, but because it we both sounded missed good. it, it sounded good. It sounded good. Uh, but because of the wood and the echo of it, the, the beats are so louder and clear. And then everybody was just kind of like silence. And also again, and, our, right, and the teachers were going, "Holy fuck!" We we knew you as boys competed for years, but we didn't know that good. You, you just thought, "Ah, they're they're going to be all right." And, <laughs> but now it's a thing where they actually they recognise the dancers a lot more. So yeah. world champions are now getting awards in school for what they do and they're just like no these people can actually do something now and I was like a lot of teachers will still be like I still remember that day mm-hmm. I think that's cool lethal very that, cool like, good way to go out that must have given you like so much confidence with, with regards to going to the pitch and stuff like that as well oh yeah like a lot a big thing for people is going on stage oh shit we've only two minutes left <laughs> that's, why, that's why I was telling you sorry to sorry <laughs> fucking hell sorry Brandon <laughs> Facebook live <laughs> let's go <laughs> <Brandon>. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan, what's next for you? What's next? Um, probably, yeah, I suppose I've, I've only so many years left in my sporting career. Like, I'm already over the halfway point, and then I'll be a freak athlete if I'll still play when I'm 50. Like, but uh, once that, I'll probably focus on family and, and work and try and grow um, my profile in my company and, and become successful in other things. But I'll likely pick up something else and become addicted to it too and that's that's the nature of it I, I can't help but have an itch yes. coaching maybe um punditry oh, yeah I, like I'd probably be more comfortable punditry than coaching mm. but I would say no to coaching right now it's not my thing but uh, the more I speak to people individually I do end up coaching but on an individual basis mm. and who knows that might grow but when you have kids you're involved you're mm. you're back in that circle again so who knows that's what have I liked it? Sexy thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thank <laughs> <Just> you. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. Brendan, do you have a good time? Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Brilliant. Up to this point, I had a good June. time. <laughs> Where's part two? Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Turn the tape over in the cassette. <laughs> Thank you to our 3,500 listeners. It's fantastic that we're back after uh, we're off for a couple of months. Looking forward to bring a, bringing loads more guests over the next uh, wee while. We're doing two a month now, and uh, we're going to bring you some cool guests over the next few weeks. We hope you've enjoyed yourselves. We hope you've enjoyed Brendan here. Thanks, Brendan. And we're going to bring some fantastic guests. Um, <laughs> Just fantastic. Just that are fantastic like Brandon. We're running out of time here. Make sure to like and share and subscribe. Everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thank you. Cheers, lads. Let's go. That usually doesn't happen. We...
Yeah. We, we are 